Good, fun. good evening, Yorktown, and welcome to the Town Board Work Session for March 9th, 2021. If you could all please rise, and I'll ask Councilman Patel to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Patel. I ask everyone to take this uh, moment of silence as we reflect on the one year anniversary of the of COVID entering our our community, our, our county, our region, our state, our country. It was a year ago on this coming Saturday that the town of Yorktown declared a state of emergency in response to the COVID pandemic. And as we've continued to do, we, we remember all those we've lost, remember all those who continue to fight this terrible virus. We remember our frontliners, every single one of them, our first responders and our police, and of course, remember the bravest men and women the world has ever known, those serving overseas in the United States military. Amen. Thank you. And let's hope that there's an end to this virus. We're getting there. Today was a good day here in Yorktown, let me tell you. We, good day in Yorktown. Quickly, just uh, introductions. Again, Supervisor Matt Slater, joined by Councilwoman Alice Roker. Councilman Tom Diana, Councilman Vishnu Patel, Councilman Ed Lachterman, Town Clerk Diana Quast, and we do have with us our Town Attorney Adam Rodriguez. Just uh, briefly, as a, as a segue of what Councilman Diana was saying, uh, we did, with a strong partnership of our friends at the county level, County Executive George Latimer in particular, and the County Department of Health, we vaccinated 350 individuals today at the Capolini Center, uh, which is uh, fantastic. Tomorrow we are already uh, we, we already have 350 uh, individuals who've uh, reserved um, and, uh, and more is on the way. So we are making very strong progress in getting vaccines directly into our community. But again, it's taking, it's taking a full on uh, bipartisan effort to get this done. And, uh, and today is one of those days where it makes it all worth it. It makes, it makes the struggle and makes the challenges all worth it when you see the smiles and the joy on the, on the people's faces, faces underneath their masks, of course. Uh, but there, were, <laughs> there were a lot of very thankful uh, seniors and elderly and caregivers who were coming through our facility today. So to all those who made this possible, uh, a big thank you. And, and, and again, it took a, a real team effort a real team effort. I also want to thank our staff. We did have staff members who were there today. Uh, we had our comptroller and members of our finance team. We had our assessor. Uh, we had uh, our HR director, of course, the town clerk's office uh, and, and her staff, and, and of course, members of my staff uh, all pitched in today. We'll be pitching it again tomorrow. Uh, and again, to the, to the county, the, we had the commissioner of health come in today to, to observe the, the pop-up. We had the county executive himself come up with members of his staff. So when we say team effort, it was, it was a true, true team effort today. So uh, we're looking forward to more tomorrow and, and hopefully as the days turn into weeks, that supply becomes more readily available and accessible and we'll continue to provide information on that. To that end, to Supervisor, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Alex. I'm sorry, Alex. I just wanted you to remind, um, there are people that will come in to the village and to Beaver Ridge. Correct. Correct. So, so, so we do, we, you know, um, this, one's, this one for me is really cool. So I got a phone call over the weekend from a former Yorktown High School classmate of mine uh, who's, uh, yeah, seriously. Uh, we graduated high school together. I haven't heard from him in years. And, uh, and he said, hey, my, um, his family owns a pharmacy and they have a shipment coming in and I want to help Yorktown. What do you need me to do? And so uh, <laughs> starting tomorrow, uh, there's going to be um, a, a specific uh, pop-up uh, through this pharmacy over at Jefferson Village where we estimate a minimum of 200 people are gonna be vaccinated. Uh, and then uh, in addition to that, he's gonna be vaccinating Beaver Ridge on Thursday, uh, as well as uh, our friends up at Winwood Oaks on Thursday as well. So um, uh, I'm gonna say his name, Yogi Cow, uh, and, to, and to his entire family, uh, who still lives here in Yorktown. Just a, a, a tremendous, tremendous thank you uh, on behalf of our entire community for what you're doing. 
uh, over the next 48 hours because you're helping the people who need it the most and and we will not forget it so thank you uh, can i just ask a question uh if somebody is living in their home and no help from somebody how to register can you please explain yes. so if you have a homebound so individual that's a great point councilman patel homebound individuals uh, there is a specific program uh, that we're partnering again with Westchester County on. And so if anyone is uh, homebound or you have a, a loved one who's homebound, uh, we are working with the county and actually Caremount as well. We've, we've uh, been talking to Dr. Lou Cole from Caremount. So we're, we're trying two avenues, but uh, we are partnering with both uh, Caremount and the county to provide direct access. So they do have people who will go directly to those individuals uh, who are unable to leave their homes That's and they true. will vaccinate them there. Now that program is, is only in its infancy stage. It, it really hasn't um, developed fully, uh, but we do anticipate it really in the next, I would hope week, uh, starting to really take off. But so if anyone does uh, need to register someone and get them on our homebound seniors list, I, I really would encourage you to, to um, contact our director of senior services. And I just wanna pause because I think a lot of people just before but one person I didn't thank and I need to thank personally is Noreen O'Driscoll because Noreen O'Driscoll, uh, I call her the guardian angels of our seniors because she yeah. is an absolute gladiator for the seniors of Yorktown. We are blessed to have her on our staff uh, and, and she deserves more accolades than I can ever bestow upon her uh, for the incredible work and advocacy that she's done, especially during the time of COVID for our seniors. So for anyone who has a, a homebound loved one or a homebound senior, please call our, our senior uh, services, services office and, and speak with our staff. Their number is 914-962-7447, 914-962-7447. And uh, again, to, to our entire staff and to our entire senior serving, by the way, our senior services staff, uh, they've continued to deliver food throughout the pandemic. Um, and that number has only grown. They've, they've, um, they're, we also just, I, again, I say this, I, I think I've said this before, but we cook not only for our own uh, residents, we do have contracts though. So, so our staff in the Capellini Center kitchen, we're also cooking for Somers and we're cooking for Cortland as well. So we really do provide um, through our senior services and Noreen O'Driscoll, um, just critical critical help for so many uh, people, not just here in Yorktown, but in our neighboring communities as well. Hey, Matt, if I so, throw my two cents in, uh, you know, when the pandemic first started, Noreen, uh, Noreen's numbers increased and I helped out. I saw, I saw the care she has for our seniors firsthand, uh, yeah. you know, and, and really she goes above and beyond on, on a daily basis anyway. But in regards to the vaccination program, uh, you know, she reached out to me being the senior liaison. Uh, I would have to say between my wife and myself, we, we you know, knew a bunch of seniors, probably about a dozen easily, mm -hmm. that we were able to get the name and numbers to Noreen. She was able to reach out, get them, get them uh, taken care of. And, uh, you know, just hearing back from some of them, what a relief to be able to uh, have someone help to navigate through this process, which has been terrible for some of our seniors. Absolutely terrible. Uh, it, it, it just meant so much. So, you know, she keeps on, keeps on serving, keeps on, on doing, and, uh, you know, we really, we're, we're very blessed to have her among our staff. Absolutely. All right, so can I say something good for uh, those who are working day and night around the world? the scientists and engineers and doctors, yes, you know, yes. and our, you know, the drug manufacturers, the new every day comes with that. And with a new kind of a vaccine that you don't need a two shot, maybe you need a one, half, whatever, their dedication and their cooperation around the world, I think we should honor them also as uh, we are getting more and more vaccine available because now it is time for us to salute all of them those who have contributed. And let me just tell you something really, really good that it is just not vaccine, just didn't came in yesterday or last year like that. It is more than 10, 15 years, this, this kind of vaccine research is going on. So it is a contribution of all the people together. We have been able to come to this success. And I hope we continue to 
uh, you know, get a new kind of vaccine as we require, because only way you can stop the mutation is to keep yourself safe so the virus does not multiply. And this is the only way we are going to get our freedom back. I see today I saw so many masks again. I walked twice from my home to the, get my car and all around like that. Please take care of yourself and other your neighbor and friends and family. Thank you, Councilor Patel. Councilman Diana, you wanted to say something. Yeah, if I could. Um, I'm under the understanding, some people have told me that if you are allergic to bees or you have had COVID within the past 90 days that you are not able to get the shot. Is there any truth to that to your knowledge? The second knowledge? part is true. The second, if you, if you have antibodies, they do not allow you to get the shot. You know, okay. First the time. Um, I haven't heard the bee sting uh, one, but I would just, if someone does have allergies and they're concerned, they're, their best bet is to call their Call their healthcare provider. Uh, yeah. In addition, I can also say though that today we had a number of, of, of phenomenal nurses uh, at the at the pop up clinic, and so people they were answering questions as well. But really, the best the best course of action is to call your your direct medical provider. Yeah, to take those I, answers. I heard bees and red ants. That if you know if you were allergic to either one of them <laughs> or both, I have not heard. I have not yeah. heard that right. too. But I do know that if you did have COVID, yeah. Um, they do make you wait, a certain, I believe it's 90 days um, yeah. Yeah. before you oh. can actually go get, because you have the antibodies. Mm -hmm. so, that, so they are making you wait those 90 days um, uh, until you get the vaccine. Yeah, I think you can, Matthew, just, I think during COVID you did great with, um, on your shows where you tell people what they can and can't do. And I think hopefully you'll continue because even if we have the, vac the vaccination, you still work you still have to do the, the face covering and avoid large crowds or whatever. There are some things you can do, but it is not you go back to business as you used to do um, when we didn't have COVID. And, and I think that that's the problem. And if people do that, we're never going to free ourselves from this um, virus. Well, again, it's uh, today was a very good day here in Yorktown. That's all I can tell you. And uh, right. the, 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 for those wondering, the, the vaccine provided at the Capellini Center was the Johnson and Johnson, and uh, oh, one good, shot, one ah. shot, one shot, and you're done. And and the vaccine being provided to our seniors, thanks to uh, Yogi Cow and the Cow family, is um, is the Moderna vaccine. Uh, so they'll have the double shot. Uh, again, to, to the Cow family, uh, they own um, Save More Pharmacy uh, over in Croton. Uh, but again, they're thinking of Yorktown first, and we can't thank them enough for their generosity and their and their partnership. Uh, we're going to go uh, begin our. We are a bit late. I apologize. So we're going to begin with our first. We have a work pretty lengthy work session. Uh, so we'll welcome uh, our first guests. Uh, now will be Gail Sullivan. Chris Croto, Croto? Uh, proposal for shamrocks on local storefronts. Uh, and this is for Girl Scout Week, which is actually this week. Diana, could you let them in, please? I think that's nice. I don't have either. I, I saw um, Gail. Earlier, yeah. Earlier. Yeah. Did, she, did she fall off? I guess I don't see her on now. Hmm. Okay, well, why don't we move forward then? And if you want to, could you email them uh, just to ask them if they're coming on? Yeah. That'd be great. So then why don't we go over to um, the railroads, railroad, look at that, just like that, we're on time. Railroad station, concession, <laughs> uh, <laughs> railroad station, concession stand. Uh, we have Tino Sinapi, John Tegeter, uh, director of planning, and Robin Steinberg, the town planner. And this is to discuss the proposal for a concession. <coughs> Uh, hopefully spring and summer at the newly restored station at Railroad Park. Hey, John. Hello. And Tino, Hello. were you there? Hey, Alice. Hey, guys. Hey. Uh, John, before I forget, uh, another congratulations on your on your uh, new addition to the family? Oh, thank oh he's you. Grandpa. You're, You're grandpa. grandpa now. A grandpa. Yeah. 
I know I don't look it, but it's true. Yeah. What's that? What's that? What did she <laughs> have? We had a, she had a boy. We had a boy. Oh, nice. Frank, Frank Joseph the third. Frank Joseph Simodomo the third. Awesome. Now I have a chance to get even with. Yeah. I have a chance to get even with John now. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to <laughs> say, you don't look like a grandpa. Believe me when I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Excellent. Th thank you all. Excellent. Best of luck and congratulations. And please send everyone our best. We'll do. We have Tino Sinappi with us. Tino, can you hear us? Uh, can I ask a question in reference to this uh, uh, proposal? Is this the first one? to be interview or how it came about because we, I didn't I don't know whether I got we, any paperwork or something you know yeah so we sent out an RFP on this uh, a while ago um, and okay. uh, Tino I believe is the only respondent that we've had uh, is that correct Robin well we actually sent it out twice mm. and mm -hmm. we got no responses <laughs> um, and then Tino, who had wanted to respond the second time, um, sent in his proposal afterwards. Okay. After the deadline. That so before deadline. we move, may I say something? Before we move anything, I would like to request to the town board, <clears throat> you gotta have a bathroom. You get a more customer over there, you know? <laughs> so next why, project. That's our next project, uh, Vishnu. So vote for the money. <laughs> there you go. Let me you. I was in the Buddha pass. Very fancy place. One dollar, U.S. dollar. They don't take it. You can have a, you know, other countries either euro dollar or a local currency. Okay, so we can uh, make some break even improvement. You know. Sounds good. Thank you, Councilman. Why don't we welcome Tino and and Tino? Could you uh, just why don't you? Introduce yourself to the board and to the public, and and to describe your your proposed use of the of the renovated train station. Can't hear you, Tina. Are you muted? Doesn't look like it. No, he can hear it. Speak loud. Oh, he's connecting to audio now. Oh. Tino is his name. Tino, correct. Because you look at it quickly and you go, oh, Tina. Tino, now you need to unmute. There you yeah. go. Okay. okay. I think I, I got it. Yeah, perfect. All right. Perfect. I was, following, I was following along on the TV, so I was a little bit of delay, but now I got you guys on here. This is good. There you go. Okay. So um, I'm Tino Sinappi. I'm a resident of New York Town for about um, five years now. Um, prior to that, I was actually, uh, my family owned uh, Catering Hall in New York Town. So I've been pretty much involved in New York Town for about, since I would say the early 90s. Uh, my family um, ran a restaurant up until I think about three years ago. Yep. Uh, for a few years I was there as well. I, I think I've met a few of you because um, I do recognize about four or five of you guys through, I think the right, I might've met you guys through the restaurants through the razors through the years and other things. Cause we were very um, involved in um, a lot yeah. of your, so, um, you know, my family's own businesses, restaurants. I grew up in the business since I was about 12 years old. Um, I'm 44 now. Um, I did uh, along the way stop uh, briefly at law school in uh, Hofstra, Long Island. Um, but I did not practice law. I just kind of did it for the education and I was an administrator at the undergraduate school. So I got some of it paid off and, you know, long story short, I went to law school, but I'm back in the restaurant business right after. Um, so I've been in and out of the restaurant business, I guess you could say now for about 32 years. Um, I've held every position from washing dishes up till owning my own place and running places, um, you know, and um, I still wash dishes and I still do the dirty work whenever um, I'm working. So, you know, I'm pretty versed in everything throughout uh, the restaurant industry. Uh, so that's my intro. Um, as Great. far as as far as concession stand, uh, I actually when you, I first saw you guys uh, renovating it, I think it was around last year. Mm -hmm. I um, drove by a few times and I said to my wife, 
and my kids, because my kids uh, love the park over there. Uh, they were saying, I was saying, oh, I bet they, they got to do something with that. Uh, I hope they do a concession stand. And I said, if they ever do, you know, I, I definitely want to jump in. And my wife thought I was crazy. But um, so I constantly followed along on the, uh, on your website to see if there were any bids come through, you know, if you guys would ever put up a bid for what's going on over there. I happened to catch it. Um, I think it was late January. Uh, I was a little late in the game. The timing didn't work out where I didn't get the bid in right away. Uh, then I was contacted if I was still interested, which I am very interested in doing it. Uh, my idea for what I think, you know, should be there is obviously something along the lines of what you guys were thinking, which is what worked out. Um, you know, a snack bar with some, um, you know, pre-made food because obviously there's no cooking on the premises. Uh, so a lot of prepackaged foods, uh, snacks, uh, produce like for fruits and vegetables, maybe. You know, uh, I, I don't know, again, with the extent of what I'm allowed to do there, but, you know, I was also thinking on the weekends, maybe doing something different or maybe highlighting different things throughout the week. Um, I also thought the idea of soups, um, you know, I could even do salads. Again, if I, I, I'd asked when I originally proposed if I could do um, maybe a microwave or um, an air fryer or something where I can heat up certain items, then I, that, that'll be able to expand the possibilities for me. I don't need to do any cooking there. Um, I do have experience in being able to make prepackaged food and um, prepare food ahead of time for, for sale. Tino, I have a question for John. John, have you gone to the health department to find out what requirements there are to have a food uh, place over there? I have not, no. You have to. If I, if I, with my experience um, with the health department in various situations, because I did um, a concession a few years ago at a pool, mm -hmm. um, there are different, obviously, levels of what you're allowed to do depending on your preparation. Right, exactly. Right. So when I was there, I was preparing food. I was doing, you know, when you have raw chicken or seafood, you have certain things that you need there. Um, the fact that I don't think I'll be doing much preparation there. I don't see. I, I from what I from what I saw, and again, I didn't. I didn't contact anyone yet. I was waiting for this to be, um, you know, to get to this next point. But I'm pretty sure what I have, I the ideas that I have will work at that facility because you do have a sink. Um, you do have like I can put a table for like a, an area that's separate from everything else where I can be able be able to organize the food and everything ahead of time. See, um, basically, when you handle food. Um, you've got to go through the health department. So okay. the town's got to get a like uh, a permit to be able to do this. Well, do we do we have to, or does the the would Tino have to do that, or does it matter? Yeah, Tino would have to do it. Tino yeah, would. it would be on me because I, I that I mean from my experience when I again I'll go back to the other concession that I ran. It was it was everything was on me, and it, it um, because it's not, it was a small operation. It, it does kind of go pretty quickly. Okay, I just want to make sure we are aware of that. Okay. Do you know your other concession was that in a full kitchen at, at the concession, like in a pool stand or something? Yeah, yeah. It was, um, it was a full, full kitchen with a prep area, refrigeration. Uh, I had deep fryers. I had a grill. I had um, a flat grill. I had a... Uh, no, no I, 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 don't, I don't need the list of equipment. I'll okay. just, you know, just, just to help you out. Uh, by the way, I have you beat by five years in the restaurant industry. <laughs> so we, we have a very similar trajectory stop uh, how many years um, so so that be, that being said the they've changed a lot of the off-premise uh, uh, cooking uh, where where you know for commissary kitchen where they've even included to the point that you need if you, so you need a commissary kitchen if you're going to do any preparation and, and in that commissary, you now can't even share refrigeration. They want separate refrigeration, the full, the full three compartment sink, uh, hand sinks, the whole nine yards. So uh, that, that operating kitchen needs to be a <clears throat> kitchen that's, that's inspected by the Board of Health. Yeah, so, I mean, if I could I'm jump in. I was just saying from a bid point of view, before you, you know, make sure you count that in because you're going to have to rent a space somewhere. And yeah. Well, my family also currently owns um, uh, a few places in uh, New York. 
that um, one, I may just buy the food from them that's prepackaged. Oh, wow. Again, it, it, it's going to depend, again, on what I'm allowed to do and what I can't do. But um, I do have basically that set up. Uh, I mean, it's kind of what I did also with my other concession is where we prepared food um, either at my, my brother's restaurant in New York or, um, or my father's in Connecticut and brought it over. But for the most part, I did everything on premises because I had that permit. Um, but as far as stuff like um, I had, you know, pre-made pizzas, I was able to reheat at the concession. But for the most part, if I cannot do that or if it's too much work in the first year, for the first year, I might just buy from vendors um, that can just basically buy. I, I can buy prepackaged salads yeah, or saying grab and go stuff. Yeah, yeah. That, that would that would be my my recommendation for grab and go. Otherwise, the the uh, you, you're going to be inundated, especially in the first year with with regulatory. Uh, yeah. obligations that it'll be crushing um so why don't, why don't we have tino uh would, tino would you be comfortable going to the department of health to just get the parameters for your operation of course. And then have that conversation we can come back to the board so we can finalize uh any type of agreement so this way you can come back with a more finalized product yeah sure i mean i didn't know where we stood at this point so um i wanted to have this You're first the only one <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that. You're the only one. Yeah, well, listen, it doesn't matter. The only one still has to be the best one regardless. Uh, it can't that be means you're number one, right? <laughs> yeah, you're number one. <laughs> I just want to ask our town attorney if he has any other thoughts. Um, I was going to say, you know, we could draft the agreement now, get it executed, assuming the board wants to move forward uh, with, with um, Mr. Sinapi. And the, you know, with the proviso that it's all, and it, it, and it indeed would always be subject to all necessary approvals, including you know Department of Health approval, and that and that the use, you know, the the, the operation will be subject to the town's approval. Yep. I, I'm aware uh, of that. Yes. I have I have a question. Uh, uh, did I hear that you want to sell some kind of vegetables and fruits like that, like a farm stand? Uh, no, or hear it wrong. As far as uh, I'm sorry, as far as like uh, selling, not like as like a market or anything. More like, um, not not vegetables, more produce for like I would say like fruits, apples and bananas. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You know, you have a built-in uh, built-in compliance system, particularly in the uh, spring and summer for people coming off of the um, railway. Mm -hmm. Yep. And people we have a tree, you know, there is the one next to the town hall, and then, uh, you know, the Meadows Farm, they sell the produce, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they don't compete with you, but there are other vendors, you know, one by the gazebo and like that, so, yeah. uh, you know, doing you know there is some competition. He's not, doing a he's not doing a farmer's market, he's just yeah, doing, he's just doing know, one. Yeah. No, 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 the food competition and local yeah, so they have a different varieties to choose from, and yeah, uh, right, yeah. What is well, the I actually, I actually, part of my bid, I had mentioned that I do want to be able to use um, local uh, Yorktown businesses for, great. To, for some of the stuff. I want, like, in other words, I know there's a farmer's market right up the block. Um, I could get my fruits from him and, and, and sell them at my place, you know. Um, as far as, like, I know there's, like, coffee stands or anybody that I'm going to talk to some of the other local Yorktown businesses of people that I may know that might want to help, you know, give me, I can work out deals with them where I could sell some of their stuff through us. And I did want to work out a program where if, if you buy in our town and then you come to me, I can give you some kind of deal or vice versa. Cause I kind of, I, I love the idea of what Matt's been doing, uh, Supervisor Slater um, with the town. So I, I kind of want to keep that flow going where the business and start to move the business and keep the business in Yorktown and support local. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's, I'm very strongly behind that. Awesome. Great. Is, you know, is the... I, I sent you my name and number in the chat. If you want yep. to copy that down, if you get a chance, just, yep. you know, maybe, maybe we could get together with, uh, John Tegeter to talk about what, what would be fitting for the, for the building too. Okay. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do uh, tomorrow is reach out to the health department and I have some contacts already, so I should be able to move quickly Perfect. Um, and I'll get some information on that. 
Uh, obviously, I'm going to need access to the building, so I guess I'll go through John for that. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Just go through John. Is the board is the, Adam had proposed it earlier? Is the board amenable to having him begin working on a contract, or do you want to have Tino come back after he talks to the Department of Health? Let's make sure he wants to do it because I don't. Yeah. But, uh, all right, so when you're done talking to the Department of Health, okay, you can come back in two weeks if you'd like and, and okay. give us an update and right. let us know if it's going to work or not work. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, for me, I, I'm very flexible. I've pictured different ways that this could work. I'm down for it in any way because I do want to be involved somehow okay. with what you guys are doing and what's going on. Great. So it's not for me. It's not, I'm not looking at the first year as sort of some sort of like um, trying to be a business mogul or anything. I'm trying to be. To me, I'm looking at getting this thing started. Let's let's see where it goes and moving in the right direction. And as far as making money, it, to me, if I if my margins are super small and I don't make that much, for me, it's being involved and in helping the town move in, in the direction that it wants to. Um, because you know, I, I'm a resident here and I've got young kids and a future yeah. in town. So you know, I'm 100% I'm on board as, as long as you guys are. You know, thank you. We're we're thrilled and we're excited about the prospects. So we're we're hoping to see you back here in two weeks. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dino. Uh, Matt, I would recommend starting the contract <clears throat> just in case, because if Tino does want to move forward, yeah, it sounds like we're, we're going to we're going to be running up against the season for him. Okay. And then, so then, so then, Tino, don't go anywhere. So then, what, we, what we'll do is then, Adam, if you want to start working on the contract, we can run parallel paths. But I just want to make sure the contract obviously states that it's all. Uh, uh, you know, dependent upon getting the necessary approvals from the Department of Health and all the necessary agencies. It, it, of course. Okay. So then why don't you, uh, we'll, we'll connect you with Tino so you can, you can run a parallel path from the health department and also from a contractual standpoint. Sounds good. Okay. Wonderful. Sounds okay. good. Great. Thank all you. Right. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Thank you. Okay. Next, I'm thrilled to welcome Melissa Rotini to the town board. Melissa and I had some wonderful conversations about an important topic uh, that we'd like to bring to the town of Yorktown. Uh, I believe we also have uh, Phil Marino joining us, uh, who of course oversees our refuse and recycling department. And we have Lou Patron, who's a deputy commissioner of the Department of Environmental Facilities for Westchester County. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Melissa, Good evening. Good evening. Lou, how are you? Good, how are you? You're doing good. Do you both want to provide a, a brief description of uh, the topic of conversation tonight? Sure. I'm going to let Melissa talk. I have to let you know I'm a, I'm a volunteer uh, EMT, and I'm currently on duty, so I'm in the ambulance house, and there's going to be a lot of calls going on in the back, so I'm going to let Melissa do the explaining and put this on mute. Well, thank you for your service. No problem. We yes, appreciate yes. that. Thank you. Go ahead, Melissa. Take us away. Hi. Okay. So, um, you know, Supervisor Slater asked us to come by and answer any questions you may have about our residential food scrap transportation and disposal program. It has a terrible acronym. It's called Roofstad. Sounds slightly like a dog barking. Um, we couldn't come up with anything better. By golly, I tried. Anyway, so the project, uh, the, the program that we have for the district is something that Lou and I worked very hard to come up with. And we're hoping that this makes food scrap recycling affordable for all the municipalities. So what it is, is pretty simple. We will be covering the majority of the costs for the transportation and disposal. There is a contribution of the municipalities based upon whether you're having a drop-off program or whether you are having a program whereby you can take, oh, actually you can still drop off either way. Whether you are asking that we have our contractor come pick it up from your yard or whether you're going to bring it to the contractor's yard. Um, either way, the pricing is going to be subsidized by the district. So it is something that is, um, hopefully the intent was to make it affordable and really encourage food scrap recycling as it is something that the state has identified as a major um, a major location to try and reduce the amount of food waste. Go to our waste to energy plant. That is very important okay. to remind everyone that we don't landfill in Westchester. We take everything to waste to energy. But nonetheless, if we can pull it out and get it composted into a, you know, a product that has improvement value for the land, that is also a good thing. So that's the real fast and short 
explanation. I don't know how familiar everyone is, Supervisor Slater. If you not very. Know. So so um, basically, what we talked about, and, and I see that Phil Marino is trying to connect, but this has been uh, an effort that a number of groups locally have been trying to push, uh, including T Town, uh, including the Climate Smart Communities Task Force, uh, and uh, and the Yorktown 100 group. Uh, Ossining has recently launched this, uh, and they are a participating member. Um, and, and essentially what we're talking about doing is putting a central drop-off point in the town of Yorktown for people to discard their organic food scraps. This would be residential only, not commercial, not restaurant, but again, uh, and we can educate people on this. Um, this was something that uh, uh, I had my eyes set on when I first came into office, uh, and, and I heard the county was trying to put a program together. <laughs> they uh, sent it around at the end of last year and, um, and so we've been exploring it since. Um, essentially for, I believe we, you said it was, um, correct me, Melissa, but we said it was, for, it was $15 per ton. Well, so the way that this works is that if you are requesting that our contractor come to your yard, if you have, so if you were to set up in your DPW yard or at some other location that is acceptable to DEC, you can set off a drop-off location, as Supervisor Slater said, um, whatever hours you want to have. The residents can come by and bring acceptable food waste to deposit into large garbage pails known as toters. Um, yep. If you would like us to come collect those toters from your yard, the price would be commensurate with with what you pay for your solid waste tipping fee, which as of right now is twenty nine eighty three per ton, twenty nine dollars and eighty three cents. So it it escalates in line with the solid waste amount. So it is a essentially a net zero. It's not costing you any more than if you had it thrown in the garbage, but you have the environmental benefits there, and so that's it's doing something good. If you can arrange to have these uh, large garbage pails brought to the suburban yard of Amerinac, that is the subcontractor that contractor that we're using, that will be fifteen dollars a ton up up to the first twenty tons. It gets even less expensive after that. If you were to have a very robust program and meet the twenty ton threshold in a, in a calendar year, but even at twenty nine eighty three, with or whatever the solid waste fee is, you are really flat. Um, with municipal solid waste Correct. again so as we said it was highly subsidized to motivate um, people to join and we did talk right. with Phil about the potential of having us transport it down but the cost the cost analysis on that uh, we felt it was it was at least for the beginning uh, better for us to have a central drop-off point to have you come pick up um, we did discuss potential sites with Phil he's on right now hey there Phil Phil you want to just unmute for me I also want to, while Phil's unmuting, I do want to be very clear. This is not a mandatory program. I just want to be very clear about this. So we're not forcing residents to participate in this organic food waste program. This is a purely voluntary, if you want to take that, I, if you want to take that extra step, and I think I was talking with Alice about this, Councilman Roker, because I, I've um, become, I, I feel like I star in one of those, um, one of those like insurance commercials, because every Sunday night I'm out there at my garbage can or recycling bin, and I'm the guy with the box cutter now who's like flattening the boxes and, and making sure that everything is perfectly sorted for, for pickup the next morning. Uh, so if, if people in our residents want to participate in an organic food program, this would be it, where you would be able to, uh, we, uh, and essentially what we would do, Phil, and Phil, you're there? Yes, I'm here. So basically we could, uh, the plan is to sell the uh, needed, um, we could sell them out of the r, &R office, the, the bins for your individual homes, or you can purchase them on your own. And then once that bin gets filled up, you just drive it over to the central point, you dump it into the, into the toter, uh, and off it goes once, we, once a week. Suburban would come pick it up, off it goes, and it would cost the town $30 uh, per day. And, and the good thing, uh, Supervisor Slater, if, as you said, if you want to start the program that way and start with the county having, having Suburban collected from your yard, and eventually, you know, hopefully there's fantastic buy-in from the residents uh, of the community and, and the, the program grows, you can always switch over and, and then start, you know, taking the waste. Or you might, you know, hopefully one day you're doing a curbside pickup and, and right. it, you know, it really takes off. So, so um, it, you can always uh, transition over at, at any point. But at least it's a starting point for us to begin to build a program. Yeah. Uh, th this has been incredibly successful in places like Scarsdale. Uh, mm -hmm. They're kind of seen as the as the county's uh, platinum level. Uh, they've they've been recognized for their incredible program, uh, and um, uh, again, voluntary, not mandatory. 
Uh, one of the things I do want to just touch on, if I can, uh, from the individuals that I've, I've raised it with, uh, what it has the feedback and experience been at these collection centers with rodents? Yeah. That's, that, that's good. So, uh, may I say something? Oh, I'm sorry, Council Patel. If they can listen and move, would you be able to provide any feedback on uh, from other participating municipalities? Yeah. I, so uh, the good news is we have not gotten any reports of any kind of rodent infestation with this. Uh, and, and of course, it's incumbent on, on the communities to keep the area clean. To uh, And Melissa can tell you there are, there are locked containers available. Uh, so you can lock them up, you know, when, when residents right. aren't using them. But, um, but also, uh, you know, I'm not going to say there's no, there, there aren't any vectors involved in it. Um, you know, in the summer, you're, you're probably, depending on, you know, if there's any spillage uh, or any leakage from any of the containers, you, 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 may, get, you may get bugs and, and uh, you know, around, around the area. There are, we have had reports of, you know, pretty prehistoric looking bugs that, that, uh, We'll, we'll oh, no. step out under the containers, <laughs> but but uh, no, there haven't been any really complaints of, of any kind of infestations or any kind of rodent problems or anything so far. Um, of course, it's always worse in the in the in the warmer weather as well. Sure. So um, usually in the in the winter there's there's no problem. Um, in the summer you're going to get you're going to get bugs, and you want to keep it as clean as, as possible. Hose it down, power wash the area, so you're not you're not attracting flies or anything. So we're talking food from the table. Food from the food table. Food from the table, yes. Uh, food from the table, so your scraps, anything that Scrap has rotted before, you know, able to be consumed. Right. Um, the shorthand is anything that came from the ground can go back in. Um, okay. So you have to think, and you know, uncoated things. You don't want anything that's, you know, if you see a paper towel, fine. But if you have a coated plate, you don't want that. Um, a lot of people look to use um, bags, but if they are, they have to be BPI certified because they won't break down appropriately. So that's very important. And just on Lou's point, there are spe the toters that are used for this are special organics toters. They're a little bit thicker usually, and they do have locking lids. And that's helpful because you are being charged by the toter if we're picking up. Mm -hmm. So you would want to try and open, you know, one or maybe two at a time. You really want to kind of limit the options because you don't want to put out 15 toters and have 15 collected and they each have a third of a right. container. Right. We can't, we can't function that way. We have to do it by toter and it's 200 pounds per toter is the calculation. But even still, as Supervisor Slater said, it is still very um, affordable. You mentioned Scarsdale. Rye also has another program that has right. curbside. So they've been very successful you mentioned Austining, which has a drop-off that's successful. Mamernick has it at their um, at their you know main DP at one of their DPW yards, so that's another one. So if you were interested in looking at what's going on in a couple different settings, those are some different settings because Austining, I think, has it in, in a park. Yeah, park. And, yeah. yeah. So those yeah. are different options for settings. Again, as long as the sites you know with the registration with DEC, as long as they're okay with the location, we don't tell you where to put it. Um, but right, and we, we've right. explored three. Uh, we've explored three sites. Council Patel, I'll give you one second. We've explored three sites. Um, we of course went first to the organic yard, but our, our highway superintendent uh, Dave Paganelli uh, had some concerns, which I completely right. understand. Um, and so we went back over to the Parks and Rec Commission. The Parks and Rec Commission actually voted to approve the use of the lower downing lot uh, because it's actually centrally located within the town has a traffic light that you can uh, ingress, egress, you know, you can use for ingress and egress. Um, and so, you know, cornering off a, a, a portion of that parking lot for this use uh, could make a lot of sense. Um, and then of course, if we wanted to explore um, the, uh, putting it closer to the refuse and recycling center, um, we could, uh, but again, the other benefit of having the, and, and I mentioned this when I presented it to the parks commission, uh, the other benefit of having it at the lower downing lot is that the parks department is located right there. So we do have uh, staff that will have eyes on the toters just to make sure that everything is made. And, and uh, obviously in addition to our refuse and recycling staff, um, but you do have a, a town presence right there as well. Melissa brought up a good point that I, I just wanna stress because we're charging the $200 a container. One thing we've seen early on with some of the, <laughs> some of the municipalities some very, very small municipalities have had suburban collecting 24, 28 containers, which we know they're, they're not filling up. So, you know, it, it, is, it is incumbent upon you to, to really kind of limit it to, to what you need for your, for your residents and then put more out as, as you need it 
So you're not you're not paying extra. I know it's two hundred dollars, but that that adds up over the course of time. Hundred percent. Something again that we can just grow into. Council, Councilman Patel, I know you wanted to chime in. Let me tell you. Uh, 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 Thank you for uh, you know bringing this program, but I have attended association town of Westchester County eleven years. Okay, and uh, last few years they try to incorporate and encourage to use this thing. Okay, I have a several question. See if you can answer it. Uh, first of all, uh, you know the order issue. You know, and so can you throw the scrap meat and bones and chicken like that? Is this also, is there any restrictions on that one or only the vegetable portion of it? And I am the only guy sitting in here, anybody watching me here, I have my own composting since 40 years in my backyard. And I'm the only guy in the street, the lowest amount of scrap, waste plastic wrapping like that, you know? So this is the great thing can happen in our community and our county and the nation because it is coming from the ground and going right. back into the ground and you don't need those fancy fertilizer miracle grow and all these other uh, you know uh, man-made poison chemical you add it in a bigger bigger uh, squash and a zucchini and a tomato you know i grew cuckoos 82 inches long straight two years in a row i was on a today show okay with no miracle going in that one, you know. So I'm very excited that you are bringing this program and educating this one because, you know, the tomato does not come from Acme in a tomato, okay? And the milk doesn't come from uh, uh, Acme or another grocery store. So there is a very good educational institution we have on Hanover Farm. And yep. it would be really wonderful things to bring it in, more children, you know, to uh, encourage them to, you know, recycle our organic waste. So thank you. Councilman, that's actually one of the first places we thought of going was Hilltop Hanover. We thought it made a lot of sense for a lot of reasons, but logistically we just couldn't uh, pull it together. Uh, so we did go to plans B, C, and D. And, and I do think though, we, we finally have a, a site that um, would, would lend itself, I think, to, to help grow, to at least start this, pro this project um, and see where it grows. And I think it's an exciting one to bring to the town. And I really wanna thank the county because they are making it so easy and affordable for us to engage uh, in this process. Uh, again, 30 bucks for a ton. Um, and when we look at some of the numbers, you know, when Melissa and Phil and I uh, and Lou spoke before, we were looking at some estimated numbers that uh, we got from other communities. You know, we don't think that we're gonna really outgrow that at least at first. So. Um, again, makes it super affordable for the town to engage in. It's a great educational component for, for our community. Uh, and again, it's a, it's a really important environmental piece that we continue to, that we continue to embrace here in Yorktown. Um, I don't know if, count, if um, Supervisor, if you want me to respond to um, Councilman Patel's question. Yeah, you can, please. Um, so what I can tell you is that, you know, yes, we agree with you. If you can compost in your backyard, that is obviously the A number one best thing to do because you don't have to travel it anywhere and the county will actually be opening um, this year uh, composted, our compost and education facility where we're also going to be offering you know, compost education, including for municipalities who are looking to incorporate it into existing organics, you, you know, organic yard waste areas so we are definitely behind that and if you are doing that in your backyard that is that is wonderful we will be accepting um meat and bone items actually i don't know if i'm allowed to share my screen but i can give you a quick um if you'd i be, am you'd be able to yep okay i can show oh, i can okay so right here you can see this is actually right out of the ima this is uh schedule c it's a part of it this is from ulster county which is one of the um end users where we're going to be taking the items the other is uh crp which has one right in westchester um but this is actually their their information and you can see right here the green is what's acceptable so meat bones, vegetables, you know, grains. So really, you, truly your table scraps and your unused food. It is things, you know, like your utensils and your pizza boxes, which if you don't know, Deputy Commissioner Vitron has a wonderful video that you can get on the county website about how to properly recycle that pizza box. It is, 
it is primo video time. <laughs> I mean, when you're at home and you've watched everything on mm-hmm. quarantine, you just pull up that video and it's it's wonderful. And you know, your cardboard boxes, which Supervisor Slater said he's out there taking off his tape. Thank you. The less contamination, the better for our recycling programs. But it is going to be uh, literally a soup to nuts kind of uh, acceptance program. Again, just noting the um, BPI certified if you're going to use any compostable bags or anything like that. But, but all of these are available and they're part of the IMA. So, you know, they will be available for, for your residents. And of course, we'll be there as support for any educational needs that we can assist with. Right. And, ag- and again, on the educational side, in addition to the county, uh, we've got some just wonderful community partners who I know are dying, dying to get involved with us on this, uh, from T-Town to the CSC Task Force, the Yorktown 100 crew. So um, I, I think it could be a very successful program uh, within our community. And, and so we wanted to bring it forward to the board and to the public and, and uh, just take a temperature and see if there was a, a desire from the board to move forward with the IMA. I, I definitely think we should look into it. Um, you know, I've mentioned before when I went to visit my daughter in uh, Germany, uh, you know, she has to separate everything. And then you bring it to the waste yard and you have all the dumpsters and the bins. And, you know, I did look around. I didn't see any rodent activity, any bugs when we were there. And they have the compost, uh, although that's on different days. Um, and and it's, it's just amazing to be able, you know, to recycle back to the earth with that. And uh, I will state for the record that I would be more than willing to sacrifice and go back out to Germany on a fact-finding mission. That's okay. okay. <laughs> Only if you bring me with you. <laughs> well, the whole board could go. There we go. You know, Matt, I think um, this is something we're going to have to sell to the residents of Yorktown. Mm-hmm. Um, starting with why? Why should they care? Melissa, you want to jump in on that? Yeah, I mean, they absolutely absolutely should care. You know, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the topic, um, DEC has identified food waste as a Mm -hmm. major, major source of recyclable material that doesn't need to go into our waste energy plant. I mean, don't get me wrong, the waste energy plant, it provides energy. It is so much better than than areas that are landfilling. We understand that, you know, the gases are different. They have less of an impact, but... Nonetheless, this is still something we can do and reducing our footprint in any way is important. So I I think that, you know, and I think you'd be surprised Westchester's residents are really very environmentally conscious. And I think that, you know, obviously, especially in these COVID times, everyone's budget is tight and those are real concerns. You know, I mean, people need to make choices. And I think that that was a key when we spoke with the administration and Lou will tell you when we went to the county executive's office and we said, this is the idea. And they said, we need to make this affordable for the municipalities. And that is what we tried to do. And that is why when I say it is really cost neutral, I mean, Outside of the cost of a few toters and a sign and the time that it is going to take Mr. Marino to file the paperwork he needs to file, mm-hmm. aside from that time, um, you know, assuming that you've got staff on site, and I know Supervisor Slater mentioned that Parks was there, so someone to unlock a toter, maybe answer a resident question from time to time, as Lou mentioned, hose the area down to make sure if somebody drops something, it gets cleaned up. Uh, you know, and again, I didn't mention this, but DEC actually is currently offering a grant that would potentially pay for 50% of the cost of the toters and the signage. So, you know, it is really, you're, you're looking at, you know, a very small amount for a very big, um, you know, environmental impact. And again, it would be the same price as MSW. So if you throw it in the garbage or if you bring, drop it off on your way into something else in town, it costs the exact same amount. I, I would also that. add that yeah, I'd also add that that food waste recycling right now is where curbside recycling was in the '90s and the early '90s. So, you know, the the way we sold that, the way we went about selling that to residents was was uh, in a large part through their children, right? So absolutely, they're, they're absolutely. Through the schools, and they come through our Murph through the tours. So now they're going to come through uh, the composted facility that Melissa talked about, and but the schools are already ahead of us. So many schools are already teaching composting as yeah. part of their curriculum, especially in the, in the younger grades. They're, they're setting up compost gardens and, and different uh, projects for the students. So the parents get to hear it from their kids, you know, that we should be doing this. We should be doing separating our food waste. And, um, you know, we hope that 
that'll help also uh, as we move forward now with food recycling and, and that, uh, you know, the children will bring that idea home and say, mom and dad, we need to, you know, separate out these products and, and, and separate it out from the waste stream. That means that they'll take out the garbage too, right? <laughs> yeah, well, let's I'm just asking. I got a five-year-old. You never yeah. know. I, I have a 16 year old and he doesn't. So. <laughs> no. I think we've done a number of things. And the most important thing is that I think residents are trying to help us reduce our footprint. Mm -hmm. And, and if we can, you know, there is a, we need to have a conversation about just, it's one more bucket in this big thing of reducing exactly. footprint. So I, 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 I've told you before, I think this is a smart idea. Great. All right. Any other the, the edu yeah, I think the education component is probably the biggest part of this is to get it Absolutely. out to the public to yeah. to to uh, educate them on, 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 you know, exactly what to do, how to do it, and so on and so forth. Um, and then give a starting date so that they actually have the knowledge behind them to go forward with this. I yeah. agree. And like I said, we're, we're lucky in this town because we've got three strong partners uh, that are they're 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 ready to go. I mean, T Town, CSC Task Force, Yorktown 100, they are ready to rock this thing and and partner with us and and educate the public. Uh, and I think it could be a very successful program in this town. And so I really want to thank Melissa and Lou uh, for for hanging in there with us tonight and bringing it to the bringing it to the board. And uh, it sounds like that we have a, a very we have a lot of support to move forward with the IMA. Great. Great. Well, thank you for having us. And any other questions, just let us know. Thank you so thank much. You. Really appreciate it. Thank we'll be in touch later this week. Thank you. Take care. You know, so Matt, I think before we, we, we sign an IMA, we really need to find out what kind of community support we're going to get. Because if we're not going to get any, then I'm not sure if this is going to work out. Um, but I think I'm, I'm not sure how to measure it. We can talk tomorrow, a Wednesday call. Um, but I think <laughs> It is our Wednesday morning call. Yeah, but I think this is something we need to get the temperature of the community. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've honestly, I, I can say that I've heard from quite a few people who are interested in doing it. Yeah, uh, Phil. Marie. Yeah, the, the, the thing to answer, Alice, the, the, the way the town is approaching this, I think, is, is the best way because we're not really, it's not costing us a lot. And, and to get the town's participation instead of going uh, house to house and having no, each no. house and us service the house. Right. This here is going to cost us minimal money. And also this is, could be something that triggers people down the road into, in, in, into food waste recycling. But I think that it, th this is definitely the best test because uh, I dealt a little bit with the city and the way the city went about it. I don't think was the right way. They spent millions, I think $63 million. I mean, you know, it, if somebody's going to, if somebody is going to take a trip to one of our bins, this person's going to be recycling. And like, right. and like when we talked about before, when we had a little meeting with Matt and I thought the park was great, more better than say like my location because people go back and forth to the park. They see it, they'll get curious. Oh, what's this? What's that? You know, and that that's, can be something else that get triggering. So I, I just think that if we were go, ever going to try it, this was definitely the best way to go because it's minimal and and we, we got a starting point and see how much it grows. You no, know, I, I, I agree with you. I'm not fighting you. What I'm saying is that not everybody watches the town board meeting. Oh, no, we're going to have to do some serious uh, outreach on it. Right, and exactly. I, when I, Councilwoman Roker, I agree with you 100%. I think, uh, like, and I think I said this on Thursday night when we were together, you know, we're in this vortex. So we, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that we're talking to people outside the vortex. I couldn't agree with you more. And so you you and I can strategize on, on the right way of going okay. about it. Okay, great. Yes, We've got a number of applications. Mr. Marino, thank you for joining us. We've got a number of uh, applications for stormwater. Right. Good night, everyone. Have a good, good night. night. Thanks, Phil. Good night. Thank you, guys. Good night. So we're going to bring in uh, our first one, 2060 Allen Avenue. We got Lou Panny from Pan Bar Realty. Uh, we're also welcoming Dan CRC, uh, who is our new land use engineer consultant for the town. Is everyone there? 
Lou? Dan, you there? Here I am. There you go. I was Dan. listening on the internet, so I was changing gears coming off the internet and coming onto the Zoom. It's all good. Hi, everybody. Hi, how are hey, you? Hey, Dan. Doing how good. Doing? Well, welcome to our to your first town board meeting. <laughs> uh, is Mr. Katie on? Lou? I let him in, but I don't see him coming up yet. Yeah. Or maybe he's over here. Oh. Hmm. Well, Dan, have you looked at the application and whatever else Michael may have had in his office? Um, I got the most recent set of plans and I did have a chance to look at them. Um, yeah. I, I had some comments that, um, uh, you know, depending upon the applicant's presentation, I mean, I think uh, what I need to do is to look at the file and see what the previous comments are that the applicant has responded to. But I think I have a, a couple of other ones that I, I would want to share with the applicant's engineer. Um, and I guess it will, we would issue a formal review memo, but I would do that after um, reviewing the file. So right now I'm just working off of the most recent submission. Okay, because we had some questions for him um, when he came the last time. Right. I don't, Diana, you're, um, are you able to message or email him to see if he's jumping on? Otherwise, we can put him back in the waiting room and go on to our next applicant. Why don't we do that? Why don't we put him back in the waiting room and when we can move forward to our next applicant until he's ready? And that next applicant would be 2572 Gregory Street. And there's a small team that we hopefully will see. Joel Greenberg, Chris Collier, Steve Coleman, Gary Barrett. This is again an application for wetlands and a stormwater permit. And we just got that, this one, right? Because I just got it from um, Jenna. Yes, it was, uh, it was just issued, it just applied uh, late January. Okay. Just applied uh, late January. Great, there's Chris, and we have Steve Coleman. Waiting for Joel Greenberg. Oh, I haven't seen Joel in a long time. Yeah. All right, Chris, do you want to, since you're here, you want to begin? I know you're the property owner. Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, Steve, uh, we're going to ask Mr. Coleman if you could mute. Uh, are you watching on TV? Okay. I'm muted. Great. And it's good to see Joel Greenberg here. Everyone there? Joel here? I think so, yeah. I'm, I'm Chris. Me and my wife bought the property about a year ago. We had hired uh, Joel Greenberg as our architect, Jerry Barrett's our landscape architect, and Steve Coleman's the uh, environmental engineer. And they put together a pretty uh, comprehensive plan that the Environmental Conservation Board looked at last week, and they were happy with when they saw it. Um, so we're looking to build uh, a house there just for our family. Uh, and I'll let uh, Joel and uh, Jerry give you the rundown on our plan. Okay. Great. Thank you. Do they have copies of plans they're going to show us? Yes, we do. Sure okay. they do. Great. Uh, Joel, you need to unmute yourself. Joel, turn the unmute. Lower left screen. Lower left screen, Joel. Or can the host unmute, Joel? Tommy, that's like you and me. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can the host unmute, Joel? He's still muted. In the meantime, uh, please uh, 
describe the street address because many people don't know where the street may be, you know, those who are worrying, uh, watching it. He's near me. Yep, not too far. Yeah. I know where it is. I'm just saying it. There are other people, maybe, you know. Again, the address is 2572 Gregory Street. Uh, yeah, Sparkle Lake. You know. Correct. Right off of Granite Springs Road there. Were we able to get Joel unmuted? He has to unmute. We don't. Um, you hear me now? Yep, Joel, we hear you. Okay. Again, uh, just uh, Councilman, uh, the property is uh, on Gregory Street, uh, just uh, off Granite Springs Road, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, five, 600 feet. And uh, it's there was development on both sides of the property houses across the street uh, to the left and also to the right. Uh, there is a wetland, which you, you can see where it says WF uh, across the front of the property. Uh, then there's no wetland and then there's another wetland in the rear of the property. Uh, fortunately, the way everything worked out, the driveway, which comes off Gregory Street, uh, we are going to lose approximately 300 square feet of this triangle, which Jerry will describe in more detail in a second or two. But we're also adding, we, we're taking away about 300 square feet of uh, of uh, wetlands, but we're adding over here almost 500 square feet of wetlands. Uh, the house uh, is back over here. Uh, we show the uh, storm tech units to take care of the drainage, uh, both for the um, for the driver, which is down over here, mm -hmm. and for the uh, leaders and gutters, which are on the house. Uh, there'll be a patio in the back of the house uh, and a two-car garage uh, on the uh, the lower part where where, I'm, where my, my where my cursor is right now. I'd like to introduce, uh, although they have been introduced, but uh, uh, Jerry Barrett and uh, Steve Coleman, our landscape architect and uh, our wetlands inspector. So Jerry, you wanna take over and explain to them uh, how you laid this uh, out. Also, you'll see a lot of, uh, when you see Jerry's drawings, there's a lot of screening to protect the neighbors. And uh, as it was said before, the, uh, the conservation board, as, as Chris Collier said, was very impressed. And in fact, to the point where they had no questions Matt, I think you may have been there, so you. I was on. Yep, I was on it. You heard it. You heard it firsthand. Uh, I think uh, I think Jerry did a bang up job, and and, and uh, Steve uh, will also talk about the wetlands. So Jerry, you, it's all yours. Okay, thank you, Joel. Uh, good evening, um, uh, uh, members. Um, so um, uh, I'm a landscape architect, and I often work with Stephen Coleman, who's a wetland scientist, and we often work on projects that are constrained by wetlands and and we work to try to find sensible and sustainable solutions and simple solutions to so it works for everyone. So I'm just gonna share my screen. Well, I think Joel's gotta unshare his. Oh. Uh. <coughs> Where? Uh, on, the, on the top there, it should say stop share. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Sure. Click that. Thank you, Joel. Great. Hopefully the survey has shown up. It is up now. Yes. Okay. okay, so uh, the subject property is on Gregory Street. It's positioned on the east side of the road. It's in the one acre zone, it's approximately 1.6 acres. There's a water course wetland system that runs down to the back of the property. And as Joel said, there's also a wetland on the front. So today, if you drove by there, it would look like a wooded parcel. There's, it's quite wooded. Um, and that first wetland system is right in this area here. And then there's another wetland system in the back. Um, what, when Steve and I were out there, one of the things we noticed was that the understory is very clean, probably in, in, indicative that the deer have been through cleaning it out regularly. Mm -hmm. um, so Steve will talk a little bit about that. We thought that offered us some mitigation opportunities. So we looked at the property again, the wetland system.
and, 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 and put together the layout. Um, as Joel said, we did have to impact a piece of wetland here, but we're going to replace it in this area here. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But Steve, you want to give the overview of the uh, of the wetland system? Sure. Uh, yeah, basically, it's a remnant forested red maple uh, driven system, you know, and, you know, which is typical, you see red maple and American elm as the common species. But it's, it's the two wetlands are connected, uh, actually, to the north, it shows some of the flagging, but uh, it travels you know, on the northern side and then comes back around to the rear, which is more of a stream riparian stream system. You know, so so it's a, it's really one wetland that's been kind of uh, you know just shaped you know by the land use and uh, you know it's it's a we did a functional assessment which evaluates you know the primary functions that the wetland provides and there's a scoring value and it's considered kind of a moderate valued wetland meaning that it's it's providing you know a good amount of attributes including you know, habitat, uh, water quality maintenance, you know, flood control, you know, and, uh, you know, and uh, good overall, you know, general plant diversity and animal diversity on the site. Uh, one of the things, go ahead. You're within the buffer then. Yeah, uh, the, unfortunately, the only way to develop this site, you know, that was approved as a building lot is, is to place it in the buffer the entire. Okay property is encumbered by either wetland or wetland buffer. Except for this little triangle. You yeah, there's a little here. Just that, that's the, so here's the 100 foot setback to the front wetland and here's the 100 foot setback to the rear wetland. So we have this triangle right here mm -hmm. uh, is the only portion of the property that's out of the regulated area. Okay, okay. So the wetland in front is a fairly open tree canopy that, you know, there's a, you know, a good amount of light that comes in and then in the rear is a more typical stream corridor with upland trees and uh, there's there's signs of a little bit more disturbance of invasive plants you know in the rear of the property from prior disturbance one of the things we noticed on the southern side is the the adjacent land uh, property uh, had been altered and there's a culvert that picks up the drainage and you know the wetland was you know filled in in that area so we took that into consideration in terms of how to make sure that we maintain a connection, you know, with the drainage that goes through, you know, the wetland area. But as Jerry mentioned, uh, we can either cover mitigation now or if you want to cover more of the, you know, site plan, Jerry. Yeah, let me just talk a little bit more about the site plan. So, so um, you know, so we agreed that, uh, Steve and I, we agreed, and Joel and, and Marty as well, that, you know, let's try to get the house centered on it so they have a modest backyard. Um, we are not clearing all the way back to the wetland line, but the woods are going to be here, so they'll have a modest backyard, and they'll have a modest front uh, front yard for the children to play on. The driveway comes in, and then this is where that wetland came down, and there was a there was a, there, there's a catch basin here that was installed, um, and uh, by a previous owner, and then that catch basin apparently it was put in to pick up drainage that was flooding down into this guy's property here. And then there's a pipe that was put in and it comes down and it, and it drains into this uh, wetland and water course in this area. Okay. So what we had to do was put like a, a low boulder wall about 18 inches tall here. This is the 325 square feet that's unavoidable so we can get the driveway over it, but we're gonna take the adjacent area about 500 square feet or so. We're gonna lower it and we're gonna put it at the same elevation of the wetland so that there's similar high hydrology and then it'll be planted with native vegetation. Um, we do show erosion controls. It will be, you know, we'll have a, we'll, we'll, we'll have a silt fence up. We'll have, uh, you know, an orange construction fence up to make sure that, you know, the, the work limit line or the grading limit line or the contract limit line, which is this, what you're seeing, that'll be up uh, to make sure that, you know, everything else is, is protected and only the areas slated for development get, get work done. Um, we did a driveway profile and you can see the dashed line you see the dashed line is the existing grade. So if you took this driveway and you know you sliced it in half and you looked at it from the side, what you'd see is it's pretty flat, you know, one and a half percent coming down this way and it's going back up to two and a half. A tennis court is pitched at about one percent. So it's pretty darn flat throughout it. Um, we did put a low point in this area so the, the water will drain through here. We will have a eight inch uh, 
PVC Schedule 40 pipe poking out to this uh, to this uh, in, into this wetland area will probably keep it up about eight inches or so. And that's to allow, if, if this area does flood, it will allow the water to bleed through and get back to that catch basin the way it did before. So that's, that's how we handle that. Um, there are some uh, trees that have to come out and they're shown in the X's and we, 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 we've tallied those up and, uh, and, uh, and, and come up with a planting plan that we'll get to next. Um, and uh, yeah, as Joel said, there will be a, a, a parking area back up space to turn around front sidewalk and landing rear patio um so that's kind of how the how the uh how the uh, site plan lays out and you can see we're kind of near the this is the proposed tree line like this so it's <clears throat> it's going to have a mature established look right off the bat because a lot of these trees we're only taking out a few trees here just to get a little bit more open openness here but all these trees are staying so you'll be getting mixed glimpses of the house through the woodland. So I think this house, as soon as it's up, it's gonna look like it's established and, 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 and all we've been, been there. And I think that's, that's important when you're in an established na uh, neighborhood that you know you don't clear cut it and make it look like it's brand new and out of right. character with everything else. Right. Um, so then we, uh, we worked on the uh, mitigation plan. And Thank you. Pardon? Uh, so our mitigation plan then was, was put together. Um, and uh, Steve, you want to talk about the concept of, of how we were going to re revegetate this and reclaim this wet, wet, wetland area? Yeah, what we, what we try to do with uh, coming up with mitigation plan is to look at what, you know, dominant, you know, existing vegetation mm -hmm. is there and try to duplicate, you know, the species so that it, you know, it has the least amount of impact on, you know, uh, resident wildlife and the uh, use of the area. So we we're going with a series of ground covers. Uh, we're using a lot of native fern uh, to, you know, fill in some of the understory. And then we have uh, groupings of native shrubs that are uh, common in the, in that particular wetland. We've got like arrowwood viburnum and winterberry and summer sweet and, you know, things that you would normally see. So we're enhancing that. And, you know, the, the combination of uh, groupings will you know, fill in over time so that, you know, we'll get, you know, good good habitat value from the mitigation. And also the other most important thing is we'll get good water quality maintenance, you know, with, with uh, enhancing the uh, diversity and the, you know, the plant soil relationship that's within the wetland area. And then what we looked at too is to provide screening for the neighbor to the north and also to the south. We have the a combination of uh, you know evergreen and deciduous trees, and you know some shrubs uh, to uh, buffer you know the impact you know from for the adjoining neighbors on both sides, and then around the house, which is in the buffer area, we went with more you know typical you know foundation plantings you know that include you know some ornamental and you know more common landscaping. You know, which is you know what you would expect to see for you know sure. a house area, but it, but overall I think the by enhancing the the front wetland, you know it's going to give you know the whole front of the property, you know an opportunity to continue to develop into a more mature you know forested, you know complex. Right, and Steve, and you know, and, and again, what 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 drove this was that you know we were. You know, we're used to going out and seeing sites a lot of times that are choked up with invasive vegetation. And what we right. think about this is there's it's it's like bare, it's like open. Um, so how many, you know, how many trees are you taking down? Uh, many. I think it's um, seven. Feet. Okay, you better look at our wetlands lot because you might need a permit for that as well. I think they are applying for a wetlands permit. As I meant tree. I meant tree. You think you're talking tree. Right, tree. Yep. And I thought uh -huh. perhaps uh, through, through prior discussions with the town that the wetland permit would double as the tree removal permit. Is that correct? So through some of our Zoom calls, we had that discussion. That the, oh, I remember that. we. Um, it, it, is the, it is the same form. Yeah. The, the box just has to be checked. So yeah. we'll check it for you. And, and while we're, while we also, down, if you're taking down trees in wetland or wetland buffer, it's covered by a wetland permit. Right. All right. That's yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
And what we're doing is we tried to place as many trees back as possible and then uh, using the provision for the shrubs, we're, you, um, we count eight two gallon uh, shrubs is equivalent to a one to two and a half inch caliber tree. So we try to make up the difference with uh, adding the shrubs back. Uh, we felt that we, you know, the, the challenge is because it's a pretty good tree canopy, you know, it didn't make sense to try to place trees that had, you know, didn't have that good of opportunity to survive long term. So we felt the shrub layer would, you know, accomplish two things. It would provide habitat and uh, would also give the, the, the coverage of, you know, new vegetation. Okay, okay, can I ask you something? Is this going to be sewer? Uh, there is no sewer there, so it's septic. Water no, coming from the hill as well as coming from the Sparkle Lake, right? You know, I mean, it's sipping in uh, and uh, stream is further down on, uh, uh, let's say, on, on the, uh, the Gregory Street, about two or three houses, right? There's a stream coming top of the hill, you know, uh, from halfway or one third on, uh, uh, on a Granite uh, Spring Road. So you have a two water source coming in, one from the street up the hill, and then uh, whatever comes out of the lake. This property is served by town water and sewer. Even better. <laughs> yeah, so that, 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 that's the better, okay. Yeah, this is the first time we've seen this. Diana, have you sent it out? We have not done a formal refer out on this yet. No. Okay, it has gotta go out. Why don't we, why don't we refer it out? To all necessary agencies and Diana, can we set a, a public hearing for April sixth? Okay. Yep. Let's set it for April sixth. And you're going to meet our new engineer downstairs, Dan. He's <laughs> not new. You know, he's been around longer than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was here when he was there. <laughs> I'm just glad he's back with us. Yeah, Joel, you would have worked with him years ago. Yeah, I did. Uh, too. Yes, I'm I glad did. to see him back. Yeah, yes, yes. it's a pleasure and uh, a good choice. Thank you. Uh, Dan, anything you want to add to this? Um, I, I think we've got a couple of little comments, and um, I guess on the referral, we'll, we'll um, share those comments with the applicant. We'll do some written comments and um, you know, we'll, we'll have something that uh, everything's wrapped up by the time the hearing's happening. Perfect. Any, uh, John Taggart or anything from, from your end? No, we'll wait for the referral and uh, comment at that time. Okay, very good. So then we'll refer out and set the public hearing for April 6th. And a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Stay safe. You too. You too. And uh, happy uh, St. Patrick's Day. Thank <laughs> That's you. The corner. Bye. We do have Lou Penny back from Hambar Realty. Uh, why don't we just go back to him quickly if we can? This is again an application for a stormwater permit for 2060 Allen Avenue. Is Lou there? Maybe not. Hello, Lou. Lou, are you there? Hi, Lou. <laughs> See that the microphone t came away, so uh, you got muted. Yeah. Hello, Lou. Lou, are you there? 2060 Allen Avenue. Okay, I guess he's not ready. Um, why don't we go on to our next one then, and we'll move forward to 2678, also on Gregory Street. Now that's also a new one, correct? correct. Yeah, there's okay. two lots there. Uh, so this he's, he's here now, Matt. Um, I'm sorry? We got, got Lou. Lou. Oh, there, okay. There's Lou. Lou, you there? <laughs> I see him. Can you hear us, Lou? <laughs> Lou, can you hear us? If you can hear us, wave your hand. Lou, you Mrs. there? Elliot, I'm, I'm on the All next right. side. Oh, Elliot. 
Yeah, yeah let's go to Elliot for 2678 Gregory Street if we can. Elliot's here for a, a stormwater management permit. Yes, this is also on Gregory Street. Gregory Street is a popular street tonight, I guess. Yeah. Elliot, yeah, it is. Uh, uh, this is. You've submitted a bunch to the board here. Am I back? Walk through your. Oh, Lou's on now. You want to take Lou? Yeah, you let's take Lou. Lou. <laughs> Lou. Hey, Lou. Better? Yeah. Uh, much. Much better, Lou. But we'll, we'll be right with you since we're having some technical difficulties. We're, we've got Elliot here for 2678 Gregory Street. So, Elliot, why don't, if you can share your screen and um, present to the board regarding the stormwater management permit. Okay, so uh, this is a property on the uh, south uh, east corner of Gregory and Granite Springs. Uh, it's here on the corner. Uh, it is um, a wooded lot here, and we are taking down uh, about two dozen trees. Uh, most of them is here in the footprint and in close proximity to the proposed house. This is the proposed house here. Um, we're not taking down any of the trees along the um, property line, the southerly property line, and there aren't any current trees along the uh, easterly property line. The, there's a neighboring driveway, which is just a couple of feet off of the, the property line. Um, we have de um, done our perk tests and our deep test pits to design a stormwater system in this area, the southwest corner of the property. Uh, the driveway is coming off Gregory Street, uh, the farthest uh, point uh, from uh, the intersection as we can get it. Um, and it's going to be a uh, single family residence uh, in this area. Uh, we are proposing to plant um, screening along um, both uh, uh, Granite Springs and along the driveway on the, uh, on the east. Uh, we didn't get a uh, landscape plan as yet, as yet, but it's going to be similar to the landscape that we did across the street on the, on the west side of Gregory Street. Um, it's the same uh, uh, landscape architect who's there. He didn't get it to me in time to present. Uh, we did go to the conservation board and um, um, right. just the last week, I think they didn't have any problems with the, uh, with the application. Um, we had gotten a couple of comments uh, um, from uh, Mr. Quinn uh, in January talking about the number of trees uh, that we're taking out and, uh, um, and a couple of our minor engineering notes. I'm sure we'll get a new review from uh, Mr. Ciarcia. Um, Elliot, with. when did you hand in this application? Uh, it was actually like last November. I mean, I think the date of the plan is, um, oh, the date of the plan is June 2020. Um, I think most of the time we were, uh, and there was a revision on September. So I guess we, uh, we added a zoning chart in September and we submitted it. It's been in the town quite a while. Um, I don't think it's completely the town's fault that it's been there. Um, I'm not really sure why it's taken so long, but. Well, I'm is. just concerned that the town board has never seen it before. Mm -hmm. And it's been here that long. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's what we're trying to rectify tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, it's a new <laughs> plan. Let it, uh, I, Matt, I think we need to do the same thing. Well, it's, uh, it's just a storm water. So it doesn't yeah. have no, no wet water here. It still should be referred out, though. No, I understand, but it doesn't require a public hearing. Not if it's just the uh, stormwater. Correct. Okay. Can we, uh, any other thoughts from the board? All right. So motion. We'll make a motion to refer out to all agencies. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we'll refer it out and we'll try to get this cleaned up as quickly as we can. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Thanks Elliot. I was quick as possible. Thanks, Elliot. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. You Is too. Lou back? Is All Lou right, back? Lou, are you still with us? Lou, can you unmute yourself? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, Lou. You got him. I finally, I had to use, I had to go to a different uh, 
electronic device that gets in group. Now you sound like Tommy. Now you sound yes. like Tommy and Diane. Come on, you, you got your 13-year-old uh, 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 teenager to help you with this. <laughs> Tommy, don't think... get... Tommy, we're okay. We're just we're... a little... We're just a little old. That's all. That we get yeah, it. It just takes a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so Lou, this is a this is a per this is an application for a stormwater permit. The last memo I have is dated December seventh. Pearl Harbor. It is. Yeah. Yep. And I know that the conservation board reviewed it in January. Yep. Dan, have you had a chance to review? Um, I was able to, to take a quick look at it before tonight's meeting. Um, I have some technical stuff that I can go through with the engineer, but you know, one of the issues is that, that's sort of important. Uh, we need to revisit the driveway grading. Uh, yeah, that was my biggest problem the last time. Than the profiles represent. Um, and I think we'll have to do two. I got to go back through the file and see. Obviously, the applicant's been responding uh, to the comments from my predecessor. So uh, I'll go through the file and see what's already been addressed. But the, the driveway comment is sort of important. Uh, and um, but I, I don't know what the comment was on the driveway. Beefed up too. I'm sorry. Uh, can, I think, can I ask me, uh, Let me say something here, okay, guys? Listen to me. Hold on one second. The, the this is the second building lot next to what is already built. That's it. That's my question, okay? What'd you say? There, there is only one building is done, and this is the next lot oh, from the there. Second okay? one. Right, right. right. Yes. Okay. I know the rest of the story now. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Uh, Dan, can you, there was a comment made about the driveway. Can you? Right. Uh, there's, there's an inconsistency between the grade shown on the profile and the actual uh, proposed contours. So we want to make sure that gets remedied. That's kind of, obviously there's, there's a threshold where it would have to come to uh, the town board for a variance on the uh, driveway grade. Um, so we want to avoid that. So I'd ask the engineer to, uh, uh, to, to cor correct that grading. And uh, like I said, I'll, I'll go back and see if there's any other comments, but we'll um, be more up to speed on the application um, next time he appears here. Okay. Diana, did we give him a public hearing date? Is that uh, a number? No, we did not. All no. right, so let's just set a public hearing. Right, it's for, it, I'm but it's just for stormwater. This is only for stormwater? Yes, that's what it states. Right. Oh. If Dan still sees that problem on that driveway, because I saw a problem on the driveway the last time um, Mr. Panny appeared. Um, I thought that was rectified, though. So. Well, I think, I think your engineer needs to talk to our engineer, and then we can get a, a resolution for you if, we, if, it's, if they come to an agreement. Okay? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it was all re rectified, but... Um, I understand he's new in the position, so I'll have to make sure that he has the updated stuff. Maybe that's okay. the situation. I think that could, could sell. Um, can you also make sure the town clerk's office gets an updated plan? I wasn't sure, too, now, on, on these, uh, these building lot applications on when there's a lot of tree removal. Does, is that covered by the town board as well? Or how does the, the mitigation plan, like we looked at the... Obviously, the, the other Gregory Street application drilled into that, you know, and had a, a, a mitigation plan. I don't know if that was referred to the Tree Advisory Committee uh, or the Conservation Board. Lou, how many trees are you taking down? Oh, I, I don't even know off the top of my head. I, I thought all of this was all went to every board. So all of these things were, as far as I know, everything came to here. Okay. Um, Everybody was okay with everything up to this point. Matt, did um, you get anything from the tree committee? I don't have it in my packet. Um, Diana, you sent Diana, down. Do you have tree, something right? from the tree? I don't have the, my folder with me at home. I would have to check. Oh, tomorrow. okay. Hold on one second. Let me see. Uh, let's see. No, the last ones that I have are for uh, that they sent earlier this 
uh, or sorry, late last week do not include this particular application. Let me ask Robin, uh, Robin Steinberg, you're on. Robin, do you, do you recall if the tree commission? Did you I receive? I do not know. No? I don't know. Okay. I didn't know if you maybe you, you, you I, I don't have a memo from the tree commission. So I think we should have them review it as well. I will have, I'll check with them tomorrow. Great. Mr. Patty, I have one other question. And it concerns um, your moving dirt from, or earth, whatever you want to call that stuff in the ground from the property and whether or not you're going to have large trucks coming in and out of, of your site, around your site? Well, well, we'll need to bring material in, yes. There will be a fill section that has to go in. Okay. You know what I asked of the last person who was on Allen Avenue because it's a very small street, right? Mm -hmm. That they have they hire one of our police officers while you're while you're doing that so that um, the people who live there will be able to get by without being upset that they have you know that they had to wait or whatever okay. uh, we, can, we, we can hire someone to i mean i don't know if a police officer will make a difference but we can bring a police officer into to okay. do that if it, if, if, it, if it's necessary to do. Yes, I, I, I asked for that street in particular because of the width of it. You know it's narrow. Yeah. It's not your regular. Uh, yeah, once, the, once there's a ramp in, though, they'll be able to, you know, get in the All site right. at All that right, point. But, but initially, while you are uh, bringing in the material, um, mm -hmm. and that, Dan, we asked that you put that within the body of the resolution Dan you got that yeah I mean I as, as Lewis said yeah it'll be the first few loads that will sort yeah. of uh, you know and then the rest of them the truck will just be whatever it takes to to back onto the pad that he builds that's fine that's fine and there is also electrical wires are too close you know it could come with a very big truck well he's gonna have to he's gonna be dumping on the property so the dump body will be going up when he's past the wires. Right. I hope his driver knows enough to do that. <laughs> I'm sure he yeah. <laughs> so just just to, just to recap here then if we can. So uh, Lou, you're gonna get the updated, you're gonna reconnect your engineer with our uh, engineer consultant. That should, that should get sorted out in a matter of days. And then we're just gonna check with the tree commission on their review of the tree mitigation plan. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I thought all that was taken care of, but again, I, normally John deals with this stuff. I'm just here because John's not. <laughs> yep. Let us. Let well, us. We just, thank you for coming. Yeah, we, we do. But let us just make sure that the tree commission did in fact review, just so that we can we can ensure that. In the meantime, okay. so we'll take care of that on our end. In the meantime, if you can just reconnect with Mr. CRC, so this way he can uh, share the issues he had in the driveway uh, grade. If you can rectify that quickly, then I think we can move this along. Absolutely. And if there are issues that my predecessor signed off on, um, you know, we'll, we'll we'll go with that. But there, I'm sure that you know, as I said, the driveway is something that uh, is important that we we need to address. And uh, I guess I, uh, you know, I'm not looking to give you a lot of new comments, but um, that that's an important one. That was the only one I had the last time. Right. Hey, Matt, I do want to point out, and I think, Dan, you might uh, remember last night, I think there were two other projects that was referred out, they thought were referred out to the tree committee that comments had not come back on. So, yes, yeah, that, that was one of the conversations last night. So. John and Robin, well, we have John and Robin with us. John and Robin, uh, can you report on that, please? What was the question? I'm sorry. It was a question about last night's planning board meeting that there were uh, referrals to the tree commission, but you didn't receive anything back. No, that's not true. Uh, I right, Rob? I thought there were two projects that were waiting for comments that had not gotten back in. Do you recall which ones they might be, Robin? I don't. Well, I think we need comments on 650 Pines Bridge and um, 
we had gotten to of the other ones, the other comments. I, I think the, the issue is just between our meetings and their meetings are not lining up always and we're but having you, meetings before they they are. Right. If you, if, you ask, if you ask specifically, they will attempt to get together in whatever manner they can to get a, a memo out. So you can ask them for that so you don't have to wait the month. We did that with one of the applications that we had last night. Uh, they were off cycle and we asked them to get comments by the 8th, which was yesterday, which they did. So. All right, I ju just wanted to make sure that I was a little concerned because I know that the Pines Bridge one, yeah, that, that they were waiting. And I thought maybe the, uh, the one by the, the, the Tesla house no, that we one, that that one, one we got. That's yeah. the one they, they took some extra time to get to us. The test, the, the 650 East Main Street, I think, was just a little bit of one body waiting for the other, the, the applicant waiting a little bit for the tree commission, the tree commission waiting for a little bit more information. So I think we made some inroads into that situation last night. Okay, very good. So then uh, just going back to Lou, so just reconnect, put the en have the engineers just reconnect and we'll do our part to make sure that we have a, tr uh, a memo from the tree commission. If there is not one on file, then we'll refer it out to them uh, to make sure that they do comment. Okay. okay. Very good. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. All right. Good night. Good night. Okay. Good night, Lou. Bye, Lou. Okay. So next, uh, we're hopping around. I apologize. We're going to go to 1496 Old Logging Road. We've got John Buckley, Steve Marino. Bob Mongro and Joe Rena. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening, board. This is John Buckley. Good evening. Uh, you, John. With me this evening are uh, Joe Rena and I believe Steve Marino. Um, I don't think Steve is on. You don't think he's on? Okay. I don't see him. Uh, I don't see him yet. Okay. Why don't I uh, proceed? I'll give you a. Yeah. John, do we have an application for this yet? Yes, you do, Alice. Okay. Uh, let me briefly uh, describe the project, and then I'll turn it over to Joe to give you a little more technical detail. The applicant is George Yankopoulos. Uh, Mr. Yankopoulos acquired uh, a 10-acre parcel of property uh, situated between Baptist Church Road and Old Logging Road East. He acquired this in, in late December of 2020. His ingress and egress is currently across the property of Ben Jacobson, the person who sold the property to the applicant. Mr. Yankopoulos proposes to create a driveway uh, of approximately 800 feet from the new parcel of land across land he, ex he currently owns to Old Logging, Old Logging Road East. Do you have a drawing? Yeah, I'll, I'll bring that up. Well, can you share your screen, please? Yeah. Thank you. No problem. So just to, to bring you in here, here's Hunter Brook, <clears throat> the reservoir to the uh, west, and this is Old Logging Road coming in. We're going all the way in, almost to the very end, well, to the very end of Logging Road, uh, which is right here. The parcel, which John has mentioned that the driveway is going to be traversing through is this parcel here to reach this parcel. What's not shown here is there's a, a dividing line across here, um, which kind of landlocks this, this back piece. Oh, okay. Go ahead, John. Joe, sure, that's really all I have. Okay. Um, to the board, this is our first appearance before you, as you know, we're just getting this application rolling. And Joe, uh, sure, why don't you take the board through the, the, the technical aspects of this, if you would. Sure. So um, in uh, early December or mid-December, we submitted a formal application for a uh, MS4 permit 
a wetland permit and tree permit. Um, and we submitted uh, a set of drawings at that time, which are a little different than this, but not much. Um, okay. The only thing we, we, we've updated on this plan that was the uh, stormwater, one of the stormwater practices was, was, uh, was modified. Okay. So, um, we'll take you through the existing conditions here. So this is, this is the turnaround at the end of Old Logging Road East. Right. Uh, there's, a, there's a common driveway which comes in through here. There's three strips which access uh, off of that and, and they are all owned by the applicant. Uh, so we, we'd be pulling off this existing common driveway here, okay. <coughs> taking it through this, this piece here. So um, the property drops down and you've got an embankment on this side, which is a, is more, is, is a combination of ledge rock and just some, some slopes. It's very, uh, it's a very uh, pretty, pretty way to go through the property here. It's very nice. A very scenic looking. Um, so as you make your way in, um, we've got a wetland, which is more or less a pond um, that that's at the furthest no north end of the site here. This is the wetland ba uh, control boundary right here. And this is the parcel that we're looking to access. <clears throat> How are you going to get up there? Show me actually. Yeah. So we're coming in off of here. Um, right. We've got a driveway. We're basically hugging this, um, the edge of this um, uh, area, this rise, which is, you know, the high point of the property is here. We're hugging this rise. We How want... high does that go up? What's that? How high up? Um, it looks like it goes from the, where the, let's say here, Right. So this point here looks like about 30 feet. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, we're coming in here with a, with a driveway. We're going to skirt this pond wetland here, uh, build a boulder retaining wall along that edge, and come in and meet the existing driveway on the adjoining parcel. Um, we've got two stormwater practices here. And here um, we've prepared a uh, because of the disturbance here, we're over an acre of disturbance, but we're less than two acres. So we've been required to prepare a full swim, right. which, which uh, we have together. That'll be uh, uh, coming in shortly. And um, we do not believe we need any approvals from the DEP because we're less than two acres and we are not uh, uh, with near a DC wetland or a federal wetland. Uh, we're not filling a federal wetland, so we, we don't think we need any approvals from them. But you're within the DEP area though, right? Well, we are, but, but, but we don't meet the thresholds. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we've got a little pull off area here in the event, uh, you know, there's one car coming down, another one needs to get by. We've created a little pull off area here. Um, the driveway, meets the town requirement, 3% for the first, yeah. first 30 feet, 10% maximum. So we're okay there. Um, we've done an erosion and sediment control plan. Okay. Which is compliant to the DC uh, regulations. We've designed this so that um, we're as close as pretty much we can get to a balanced cut and fill. Um, and we're, <clears throat> so, at this point, we're just shy of needing to bring in about 600 yards of fill, but we we really think that's going to be cut down. What, what we're not, what this drawing does not account for, and it's hard hard to predict at this point, is we know as, as the excavator is making his way through the site, we're going to have some pretty significant boulders um, that we can use to uh, place along the driveway to create. Uh, some retainage, and that'll cut down the amount of uh, fill that we're going to need. Um, we've done a, a tree plan. 
this shows all the trees that are going to be removed. The count of trees that are being removed at this point are about, about just over 50 trees, but that number is going to go up because uh, I'll just take it back to this because it's a little clearer. Uh, Can you talk about this this area over here? Um, the area as you go up to the to the as you go up to the left. Can you talk about that again for me, please? Where where is that, Alice? The um going up the up the driveway. You've got the um where the pocket wetlands is. No, uh, this is um over. Go move your um. Show me your um. Your your um. Go up the go up the go up the driveway. Yeah. This way. Yeah, you've gone too far. Come back down. Okay. Go over right. Go over to the left. To that area to the left. Here. No. Up the driveway, halfway up, and now go keep going. Go to the left. That area over here to the left. What's that? This right here. Yeah. That's all. That's a stormwater practice. Okay. Okay. Yep. Is it down water? No. Is it, they have the they have the well. Will it be a well or a down water supply? No. There's there's no um, no water supply. This is just a driveway. No. 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 When you build the house, the water will come from the town, or they gonna drill their home who uh, are well. The, the house is already there. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah. Vishnu, at this point, there are no plans to develop anything beyond what's existing on the, the site. Uh, okay. The applicant views it as a recreational area tying into the other parcel of land. What's on the other parcel of land, John? A one family residence. Okay. So he owns all of this property. Yes. Basically, okay. just trying to provide himself access to old logging, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. By constructing a driveway across the property that he now presently owns. Correct. Let's get it done. Yep. Um, Diana, did we send this out? No, we haven't. Okay. I'm not afraid to send it. No, no, you're not. You're not. You're not. Um, you tried to get it on. It was like a start and stop kind of thing. I thought. I thought um, uh, Joe had come to us at one point, no. and he didn't want to give it to us. No, well, he wanted. To, it was like a start and stop. But regardless, yeah. I think that what we should do here because it's wetlands uh, and tree. So why don't we why don't we refer it out to all agencies and can we set the the hearing for the sixth of April? How many hearings do we have? Let's not go overboard. I don't know that we're going to have enough time to set it for the 6th. How many do you have set for the 6th? Right now we have the one that you just did. Mm -hmm. Right. Then we have the refer out for the storm order, which should be just a resolution. Okay. And we have this one. I just don't, I don't know the time frame on this one. We have to refer it out to all agencies and get it back, and we just may not have enough time. Oh, yeah, you won't have April 6th. So if we you could, the, if we could do the 20th of April, that would be better. Okay, so let's do it for, for April 20th. Do we have any, uh, I mean, do we have any public hearings yet for the 20th? No. Okay. Okay. Merci. All right. Did you you see both John? John? Both on that. Thank you very much, Lord. Thank you. Good to see you, everyone. Thank you, Okay, now we're going to go over to 712 Kitchewan Road. Okay. These, this is a transitional zone amendment. Uh, these are our friends from Tracer. Remember, they came before the board? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so now they, they have their formal uh, uh, amendment application in. Okay. So we're happy to welcome back. Uh, they've got quite the team, uh, but we're going to start with Taylor Palmer from Cuddy and Fetter. Is Taylor with us? Oh, I'm sorry. You're mute. Um, we can't hear you. You're, I see you talking, but we can't hear you. No, we still can't hear you. I see Peter. Tommy can fix it. No, he can't. <laughs> hey, Steve. I see you. 
Great to see you too. I'm here with Mike. How hey, you doing? Mike. How are you? Good. Are we are we having some technical difficulties over with uh, Cuddy and Fetter? I don't know. No, we still can't hear you. Why don't you can you sign out quick and then just sign right back in? And we'll she let might have to, you might need she to might have to connect to audio, just like Joel Greenberg had not done. Yeah. Or select your microphone. It's the same as system. Okay. He's gone. Bye bye. Maybe I can start. Uh, yes, please, please. So hello, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, good to see you. Um, I hope you're all doing well, and we're grateful to be here tonight. Um, I know that um, uh, uh, my part of what I was supposed to do was ask everyone, um, for those of you who maybe not have seen it, I, I do have a small video of the location. Uh, some of you may have seen it already, but I'd be happy. It's just a three or four minute video to kind of refresh the same one you shot on your iPhone from the, the one you iPhone? shot on your phone. <laughs> it, is. it is. Should I show it again or have we all seen it? I think we've all seen it. I mean, the board, yeah. you showed it to the board, but it, that. The, I think we were all here. We, I think we were all so Dan didn't see it though. No, Dan, do you need, do you want to see the video? That's all right. I don't need a private screening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. He walked around with the camera. But I, I can Actually, uh, I'm familiar with this just kind of give you an update um, on some things that I know um, as Cuddy is trying to get on. Um, so we um, had a very nice meeting with uh, our neighbors, um, and they, they formed a group called the Friends of Kichuan, as you may know. Right. And, um, and so in our last meeting, we discussed that we would meet with them and, and talk to them about uh, the proposed changes, uh, and we did. And... Um, they had come up with some very good suggestions on the size of the space and possible alternate locations. Uh, we uh, explored all, all of those options. We actually had a land surveyor come in and we worked with engineers and uh, went back and forth with the neighbors and finally came to an agreement with them on the size and the scope of the building. And essentially we've, uh, we've moved back the building away from the edge of the property Mm -hmm. um, uh, by two feet, and um, and even though it seems like a small amount, it, it's not a de minimis amount because what that allows for us is, if, is for us it's to plant uh, the proper foliage uh, to block okay. the you know the some of the sight lines for one or two of the neighbors. Uh, okay. We've also also offered, and we're going to be putting a, a plethora of. of trees there and we've also offered to put trees on their property if they would like um so to further block it so not only are we going to put trees behind our building but we offered to put trees on their space which i think they're going to uh, uh, opt for so we've come to an agreement with our neighbors and they've been very gracious with us and um and so we are kind of ready to take the next step and um, and I know that, that Cuddy had an agenda. Steven, um, Steven, if I may interrupt you, Taylor Palmer with Cuddy and Fader. Oh, I'm jumping in. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good, good hi, job, everybody. Sorry. Great job. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the Cuddy and Fader tango. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Supervisor Slater and, and, and the members of the town board. Um, I, and Stephen, thank you for, for the, the, the uh, supply time there uh, in the meantime. It was, it was a filibuster. It was a filibuster. It definitely was. It definitely right. was. It's well better, than the, better than last time. I think we were talking about fluoride. So I think that joke <laughs> was like twice, uh, you know, in, in two meetings. So I'm, I'm glad yeah. we're here. Stephen, um, thank you for the background. Um, that was, as, as the supervisor mentioned, we are here now with our formal application. Really, the application that's before you, because we're in the transitional zone, it is a formal zoning petition, uh, an amendment of the existing transitional zone that is applied to the premises. But in reality, it's really an amendment to an existing approved addition to the building that was previously approved by the town board in 2017 right. so right. so the action itself is one of a bit more um, uh, larger construction as far as the we're we're, uh, we're adding to the addition but it really is just an extension of what was previously reviewed and approved and because we're in the transitional zone it has very specific uh requirements that are tied to the building itself so 
We're seeing very de minimis changes to the side yard and rear yard setbacks and ultimately to the coverage. So the site plan that we put together includes those details and has that sort of layout. We understand tonight is a work session and we look forward to having uh, further discussions with the board related to uh, the certain um, uh, processes. But if I may, uh, just because we do have our, our consultants here, I'll have Mike Bodendorf of Hudson Land Design, who's our project engineer, very briefly just show you the, the site plan on the screen so that we right. can, you know, for the benefit of the board, just show you where, where we were and where we are. And then we do have our architect will show you the, the refined building design that Stephen was discussing so that we can all, um, you know, we have a, a, an understanding and idea of, of what has the hard work that's gone into this redesign. Again, speaking with the friends of Kichuan and making sure this is really a building that, that speaks to the, the, the existing character. Thank awesome. you. Yeah. Mike. You know, I, I've always found, uh, even dealing with you folks in the past, that you've been very respectful to your neighbors down there and uh, um, always willing to work with them and, and come up with an ends to the means on what you folks want to accomplish. And, and, and it seems to be a, uh, uh, a happy coexistence, may I say, yeah, um, thank you. With, with the neighbors down there and, and, and the friends of Kichuan, et cetera. They're very nice people. We get along with them very well. Great. Yep, thank you. Hey, is it me time? Yes, yeah. it is. You're up. Okay. Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, Mike Bodendorf, engineer for the applicant. Um, can everybody see the plan I have up on the screen? Yes, mm -hmm. we can. Okay, so this is the, the overall site plan. Uh, I believe the original proposal was just interior work, uh, generally. Um, the proposed addition that Taylor is talking about is located right here. Um, I'm just going to skip to um, page four and I can circle back to uh, elevations and floor plans and I'll let the architect speak to those. Um, but page four sort of um, gives you a little indication of the difference um, in footprints. Okay. Of the building. Um, so you see this brown uh, structure here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you can see this, but. You zoom in just to yeah. the green area. Yeah, and just bear with me. This is kind of a, this gets a little wonky sometimes. I would do it like four or five more times. Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Just so they could really see it. And then just kind of. Yep. Maybe we, should just, maybe we should just mute them. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So yeah, let me move it over a little here. Good. That's great. So here we have the existing building uh, where interior renovations took place. Uh, if you can see through this, this brown um, shaded area, the old footprint and foundation can be seen here. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna add about 1,095 square feet of impervious to this. Okay. Um, and the disturbance associated with the addition results in about 6,000 square feet of disturbance. So we prepared uh, erosion and sediment control plan SWIP for this project. Um, you know, there is some minor grading that will take place with the building. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's generally it at this point. Um, uh, you know, there isn't, there isn't uh, much else going on outside the building except for the building itself. Uh, no parking improvements, no driveway improvements. Um, just, just the building and, you know, disturbance associated with building the building. Okay. Um, at this point, I can turn it to the architect and he can um, talk to the, uh, the elevations of the proposed structure. Cool. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. My name is Peter Wintermantle. I'm uh, the architect with R.E. Siegel's office. So just to run you through the changes from the last uh, time the addition was approved, the overall height of the structure is actually getting lower. Um, the previous uh, approval was for a gable roof, uh, and that was actually 26 feet high. So the design changed a little bit. Um, we, the building broke up a little to fit more um, in context with the rest of the building that's there. So the overall height actually drops down um, to 19 foot eight. And as you can see, it's broken then you know, the facade's broken into the two different volumes, really, uh, with the cedar siding. So one would be painted, uh, and then the other would be stained. So, you know, we think it fits better with the context of the, the rest of the building there. Um, and again, you know, 
the footprint does enlarge from the previous approval, but the overall height drops down and then there's more trees to screen the building as well from the, the neighbors. Thank you. So I don't, yeah, there, these are, you know, a couple images, you know, you can see the rendering and then the elevation, but I don't know if there's any other, anything else you would like me to speak to at this point. Any questions from the board? No, I want to talk to John Hegeter. John, what are we, what are we doing here? With this application? Yeah. Uh, it's going to look and smell like a site plan. Yeah. Uh, basically, you're going to have a couple of resolutions that are going to modify the setbacks in the transitional zone, mm -hmm. uh, which will, um, you know, feel like a, a, a setback variance, so, so to speak, but you'll do it by resolution. It will modify the zone. And then you will have a, another resolution as, uh, which will um, uh, amend the site plan. Okay, okay. Now, have we ever taken in the, the site plan? I believe- Yeah, you did, it two, you did it in 2017. Our, I wasn't here in 2017. Right. Oh, have you ever, have you ever taken in the site plan uh, on this application? Is that what you mean? Yeah, I mean the application for this. Um, yeah, it was it was filed with the clerk's office. Yes. All right. So we really just need you to do a resolution for us then, right? Pretty much. Okay. I'm good. I, I was good the last time we saw it. It's yeah, it's a little bigger, but again, it it's not with regard to your site. It's not that much bigger. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, I'm no, fine. I'm good. I'm still good. All right. So why don't we why don't we refer it out and and let's talk to Diana. Diana, when when do you think we can set the public hearing for? Is the public hearing? John, do we need to have a public hearing if you're just saying we have to just do a resolution? I think you should do a public hearing. Because uh, I so I didn't. I, yeah, I didn't mean to say I didn't mean to say you're just process wise just doing a resolution. Okay, so can <laughs> can we refer it out and have the public hearing on four six since this is mostly internal agencies? Yes, I think so. Yes, then let's do it. Let's. Okay. And if we may, we'd ask the, the that the town board consider at, at either at, at at a regular meeting or at, at a future or this meeting declaring itself to serve as lead agency for the seeker review while the addition itself would constitute a type two action because the zoning change is involved that is a unlisted action uh, under seeker. Motion that we declare ourselves lead agency. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Lead agency declared. We'll refer out and set the public hearing for April 6th. Thanks, Supervisor Slater, members of the town board. We appreciate all of your time tonight. We will uh, coordinate with Ms. Chegator uh, and Ms. Steinberg, and we will also speak to Ms. Quast with respect to uh, getting the, the notices uh, posted and everything else for the for the site for the public hearings. Great. Okay, you should keep Thank your you. little video so we can see it during the public <laughs> Next time, I'm going to come with my cat filter on. Okay, so <laughs> be ready for it. All right. I think you okay. used to put it on the town website. You know, it's, uh, let people know what are you doing. You know. It's a quite a wonderful uh, projects and uh, your, what you are doing is really something new and it's really nice to advertise in, uh, even in our community and in the school, you know, how yeah. things work in new technology, which uh, really bring the arts and science together, you know, it's wonderful. It used to be a botanical garden yeah. and now you're making something better, you know. <laughs> Well, it's it's beautiful. The site is just beautiful. Well, hopefully, when the weather gets a little nicer, we can have all of you there, maybe for a barbecue. Okay. Help me in. <laughs> we're, we're there. Okay. <laughs> Love a good barbecue. Gentlemen, thank you. Really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you very much. Take care. Take care. Thank, thank you. Bye now. Going over to 3700 Barger. <laughs> this is Supervisor. Thank, thank you, Mark. Barger. Hey, Danny. How you doing? Danny? Well, good evening. How's everybody doing? Good, Danny. Uh, see you. Danny, is Rich Williams joining us tonight? No, just uh, riding solo tonight. Okay. <laughs> Pressure's on. Are you okay with that? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I, th- I think I got it. All right. All right. John, <laughs> tell us where we're at. Uh, so the last you saw these guys, um, you had – Obviously, this has been approved since, uh, I think, October. Uh, they had some conditions that they had to comply with, which they did. Um, and there was a couple of things left for them to do. One was, in particular, the sign, sign package, which you wanted right. some revisions to the monument sign. Mm-hmm. And they also agreed to um, modify the architecture on two sides of the building, right. which I think that you were confident that you would not have any comment, but you get a chance to look at it tonight anyway. Um, I do, by the way, have the site plan. I have the whole package ready for signature, uh, which I'll bring over to the supervisor's office tomorrow. But tonight, the major thing is to look at the sign. uh, And if you decide it looks good for you guys, uh, I do. I did send over a resolution that you could adopt tonight or wait until the the, uh, hearing next week, uh, the uh, public meeting next week. Danny, what do you got for us tonight? Uh, so I'll, I'll share my screen so I can, uh, yeah, go ahead. for everybody to see. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if the board wants me to go through the entire, entire sign, sign package, but if not, I can just skip down to the monument. Well, I think the important thing just to note here, the, um, those windows on the side, right? That's something that we yeah. talked about. Yeah. You know, as you can, as you can see, that's correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you did, Adam. Okay. Yep. Okay. Both on the east side and the west side of right. the uh, of the building. Right. Yep. And was there something near the roof? Was was the it front? Yeah. Well, on the front of the roof, we we are proposing a just a a, a logo sign right. uh, at the front peak, as you can see. Right. And a time clock um, on the lower portion of the peak. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. If you want to give, you want details on the on the building. We're proposing a Cocoa Farm sign uh, measuring six by six, a total of thirty six square feet. The town code allows one square foot for each foot length of the building. Uh, the building measures out to be 53 feet long plus a quarter square foot per foot from the front yard setback, which is 30 feet. So based on building length and uh, setback, we're allowed a total of 60 square feet. Okay. And we're proposing 36, uh, 36 square feet. Yep, so you're well within. Okay. Continue. Now... Down to the canopy, we're proposing two mobile signs. Right. Um, two permitted uh, square footage is a total of 30 square feet. Uh, both prefer, uh, proposed mobile signs, some of 26 square feet. Okay. So within, you know. And then finally, we have the monument sign, which on our previous meeting, we proposed a 10 foot six by nine foot eight uh, sign with a two foot 10 by 11 foot four base uh, that the sign would, would sit on. Uh, the previous Thank sign you. total, the previous sign totaled out to be 102 square feet per side in a total of 260 square feet for both sides. So we are now we took the board's concerns and recommendation from our last meeting, and uh, we're now proposing a six foot by five sign with a two foot ten by six foot base, um, wrapped in stone veneer to match the build- building material. Um, the sign totals out to be thirty square feet per side. Both sides total out sixty square feet, which puts us in within the compliance allowance of square footage for the town code. Yeah, that looks so much better than the last one. Yeah, yeah I like it. The, the other one's a little big. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Agreed. A little big. You all right. did what we asked. Yeah. That's all we can do. That's all, yeah. we, all, we can do. all they can do is do as we ask. We appreciate it. All right. Good. And that conforms with the code. Yes. Any other comments from the board? 
No, okay. I'd actually gone around as, as silly as this sounds. And I did some measurements on signs on other gas stations. One was the mobile over in town. You were that uh, guy. I saw a guy running around a bunch of gas stations. I didn't <laughs> that was me. That, that was me. That was, was with my, uh, and, 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 uh, you know, I did, and, and most of them are complying within, you know, a little bit, uh, and some are small. So, you know, this is, this is a, 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 an absolute positive here. Great. It's so seldom that people come with what we ask for. I know. Like, all right. I'm good. Yeah, me too. Does the board want to entertain the, the resolutions tonight or do them? Yes. Next? Yep. Do it. Get okay. her done. We'll get her done. Get yeah. her done. Great. Let me just pull them up real quick. Unless Danny doesn't want to do it tonight. Uh, we're, we're ready. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're ready. I'll be there tomorrow with a shovel. Okay. Let me know the day the building comes down. I want to be there. <laughs> Will do. John, thank you for walking us through this. Sure. All right, you, John. You want me to read the uh, the whole resolution? <laughs> no, that's up to you. you. I think most the first half of it is just set up stuff. So. So we'll do the uh, the bottom half. Uh, where uh, let's see, we'll see. Therefore, resolved that the town board uh, by the town board that the proposed project signage plans being compliant with specific. A special permit criteria except for the location of the proposed monument sign are hereby approved and be it further resolved that in light of the location of the proposed project, the size and design of the monument sign, the town board grants the requested waiver from the requirement of the sign to be located five feet from the property to a location that is three feet from the property line and be it resolved that the conditions and requirements of the approving resolution of October 20th, 2021 remain in full force and effect except as modified herein and resolve that the applicant must obtain a sign construction permit from the building department in accordance with the requirements set forth in this resolution and the associated signage plans cited herein. Entertain a motion? Motion. Does anyone have a second? We have a second from Councilman Diana. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Let us know when the let, let Councilman Diana know when you're gonna I, I, I will. I'll keep Thank an eye out for him. Okay. Um, I'm not <laughs> Thank far you from so there. much, everybody. Get your help. <laughs> we'll look forward to uh, starting this and uh and uh serving the residents of your town. Thanks for both. It's gonna look good there. Absolutely. Absolutely. It'll be nice. We'll look Absolutely. forward to being there. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Have Thank a good night. You. Have a good one. Thanks, Danny. Take care. Okay. Last but not least, final item for this evening is another conversation on our proposed overlay district zones. I know that Adam and John have uh, been amending or they circulated a, a amendments based on our prior conversation from the last work session. And this is just a conversation for the board to see where our thoughts are on this. I just have one thing that I just want to say that um, uh, that I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of of the um, housing committee, um, and they're they're requesting. Uh, that we do something to create some affordable housing in the overlay zones since developers are getting uh, are a somewhat of a bonus. They, they suggest that we, that we require them to do um, affordable housing. How many units? They're not. They, they want, they'd like 10%. I, I would say, I would say this, um, and, and I appreciate their comments. I know that there are other advisory boards and, and uh, commissions and other regulatory okay. agencies and boards that want to weigh in as well. Uh, and so what I would like to see us do is if we are at a place where we feel that the legislation can be referred out I think that we should take that step so we can take all those comments collectively 
I agree. And digest them together. Okay. Um, because I know that we've heard from the Heritage Preservation Commission, um, and I know they want to see it, and of course everyone gets a seat at the table, but they have comments that they'd like to address the board with. Obviously housing has their comments, um, but I'm sure there are others that would like to weigh in, which we welcome because it's- Totally agree. Totally yeah, agree. We, want it, we want to make this again, uh, this is a, I think the amendments that we made were, were well done. I want to thank the, the I did too. department and, and our town attorney for, for really digging into this. Um, but I think it's important for the residents to understand that this is not a final product. This is a very collaborative process. And, and that's how we get good legislation. And I think that- They can get a copy of the legislation and weigh in as well. Absolutely, uh, yeah. And so I, I, at this point, if there's no substantive conversation about the legislation, then I would like to make a motion that we refer it out to all agencies I'm not setting a public hearing at this point because I want to see what those comments are. I agree. Mm -hmm. But let's refer it out and see what we get. Second. So let, let, let me ask you, is that the hotel uh, issue was also part of the, uh, is there anything in written? That, uh, John, do you any, want to explain how you address the hotel interesting, issues? Interesting. Is there anything in, in, in a correction of yes. this only, yes. you know, Yes, John, John, let me, how uh, you let me hear. Okay. I'm, what I'm is written about the, you know, the boutique section and how it works and like that, you know? Yes. Okay, Vishnu. And there is, and uh, you guys asked me to do that. So in our, in our code now, as written, there is a section uh, 300-52, which is a special permit for hotels and motels. Uh, it is allowed in, as we, as you know, the C3 zone and hotels are also allowed in um, the interchange zone. So what we've done, and I did speak to uh, Joe Rena on this, what we've done is we under special use, but special uses by special, excuse me, under permitted uses by special permit, which is in section 200-55 and it's uh, paragraph B, I've added, and I'm quoting now, boutique hotels in accordance with the regulations set forth in 300-52. Now, what we'll do is we will, subsequent to this referral, we will begin to write some of the definitions and any particular requirements, such as a room limit or a square footage limit, things like that, that would be associated with boutique hotels and propose that for 300-52. The other thing that was changed was under the maximum height of the building, um, which was previously 40 feet um, and may not exceed three stories. I modified that to say maximum height of building shall be as set forth in the underlying zone, subject to variation of up to 25% and may not exceed three stories. Enclosed space may be allowed at roof level, which may not exceed 50% of the area of the roof. Now the hotel that you saw had peculiar requirements, which I made these modifications to accommodate. For instance, uh, it, it tops out somewhere in the neighborhood of 41 feet. Uh, the underlying zone, which is the C2 zone has a uh, a cap right now of 35 feet. So if you do the 25%, you get to about 43 feet. Uh, and also they do recall, if you recall, have a rooftop uh, like cafe bar okay. uh, and part of it, portion of it is enclosed and under a roof. So I made those modifications to uh, accommodate that. Those are the three modifications. It will require um, some addition to um, 300-52, but I think we can do that subsequent to uh, referring this out. Other questions from the board? Other comments from the board? John, so you can see it today. I have not read it, okay? Because it came, you know, up to what, two o'clock or something was uh, sent out or something? Well, well, no, I sent it, um, I sent it last week, Vishnu. Yeah. Um, so and today I sent it out. Changes, you know. 
Today, I sent out only three changes, which were really were listed in the email. Grammar changes, and Thanks. I listed them in the in the email. John, could you? I, I think it's important for any of the residents who are listening, because some of the comments that we got last week, I think, were were let's just say misinformed. So, can you one more time discuss the process? in regards to the town board's role and the criteria in which the town board under this proposal would review applications before uh, uh, approving them or, or rejecting them in order for the planning board to review them under the overlay district guidelines. Yes, oh, sure. So in a word, you will authorize any particular project within the Yorktown Heights district to be allowed to be processed by the planning board under the statute that you are considering now. Right. What that will look like is that a potential applicant will come to the town board with whatever documentation is appropriate and whatever documentation you ask for, namely plans. And when you say appropriate, don't say that because if they don't come with, with information, then for me, they can go home. So they can't right. well, come with a little piece of paper. Right. Yes, and, and what I mean to say, Alice, is that if they come with just a little piece of paper, that would not be appropriate, and you would tell them, and either you would give them the opportunity to, you know, give the information that you're looking for or, or, or send them home. Right. So I that's, what I, that's what I think that's what I think about and, and, and Councilman Roper, the expectation is that the board would be given a full presentation. Yes. And hopefully an application that it can see. Um, right. because, you know, we're not, that's the purpose of us looking at it is to look at it, not just to show it on the screen. Um, and I think that's what people, that's what people were asking for. And that's what, that's what I, I think we all agreed to do, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I wasn't fully aware of that. And I, sorry that I misled by saying whatever is appropriate. Clearly what I mean, or maybe unclearly what I mean, is that it's appropriate whatever you need in order to make the informed decision that will allow them or not to be um, reviewed and approved under this statute. So whatever it is, whatever amount of information that is required in order to give you the full information is what, is, is what I mean by that. So. All right, John, let me, let me just go for what I'm looking for and I tend to think it's what most people are looking for. Let's say um, Underhill Farms comes before the town board. Um, I need basically what he's going to present to the to the planning board when he goes there, because we want to see uh, uh, a traffic study. We want those are we want to be able to look at those. That's, those that's, well, yeah, well, I mean, we would expect the traffic study. We, we would expect as much information as they would provide to the planning board in order to determine whether or not it should be allowed to go to that next step in the process. We agree. And what is the next process in, in, in writing? Yeah, let me, let me just be a little clear, clearer on that is, you know, for instance, I think the planning board will be getting more information because of the technical nature of the lot, a lot of those things. So let's be clear on that. Of course, you will get as much information as you feel you need uh, in order to make the informed decision. So you can ask for traffic studies if you understand where it is and it will have a clear impact. Uh, anything that you're looking for in order to make those decisions, you have full full rights to ask for that and, and, and so should you. Right, and I think that they should be able, they should look at what we're gonna be looking at and when they come before us, make sure that we have the information that we need. I think there were eight criteria we're looking at. Exactly. John, yes. can, you re can you just remind yeah. the board and the public what those criteria are? Yes. So there is uh, a section, and, and by the way, this is where one of the small modifications were made, which is adding the word weather. Anyway, I will read you the first sentence in front of these eight requirements, which is the town board shall make a determination whether to authorize 
the project for consideration under the overlay district after making the following determinations. Number one, that the project is consistent with the general goals of the comprehensive plan. Number two, that the project will not likely be detrimental to the character of its immediate neighboring properties or the district and town at large. Number three, that the scope of the project will not likely cause operational difficulties on the site that have potential to negatively affect the health, safety, and welfare of the public. Number four, that the town's infrastructure is capable of servicing the project or that the impacts or deficiencies of the infrastructure can be appropriately mitigated. I know that was something that Councilman Diana raised. Correct. And, and um, uh, Councilman Roker, Councilperson yeah. Roker. Correct. Number, That's yeah. number five, that the project will eliminate a blight or potential blight within the district. Number six, that the project is consistent with the goals and intent of the overlay district. Number seven, that the project is consistent with the requirements of the overlay district and does not exceed the limitations or requirements set forth therein. And number eight, that the project is likely to contribute to the economic development of the district and town at large. You want me to read the next couple of sentences? No, I don't. Uh, I, I need in yeah, writing, good. I gotta read whatever is written. So, because you know, I have a leaky memory, I can tell you that too many things are going such a high speed, it's higher than the speed of light, you know? So if I got it today, I'm gonna to have to read it very carefully uh, before I say anything else more, okay? This is a big referral, um, Vishnu, so it's not gonna go anywhere anytime soon. Exactly, it's just a referral. Any other comments from the board? We have Count Councilman Diana or Councilman Lachterman. John, I just when when you when you speak about the safety on the property, uh, is that in regards to the project itself, to the traffic, to a combination? Um, when number three, that the scope of the project will not likely cause operational dif difficulties on the site that have the potential to negatively affect the health, safety, and welfare of the public. Right. That one. Yes. So, for instance. The location of the ingress and egress is it in a safe done in a safe manner um, are, is the storm water is it does it have the ability in your determination to adequately deal with the storm water so it doesn't negatively affect the public in terms of flooding downstream things like that yes correct right okay very good councilman diana any thoughts you good? Okay. So we have a first and a second to, I'm sorry, Councilman Lachterman. No, no, I was going to renew my motion to refer. We have a motion to refer out. We have a, and we had a second earlier. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, before you say, I, I want to ask one more time to this entire board and everybody listening at home. This is the first step uh, on, on an overlay for the entire town now, or only this, any one specific site, because so many issues was only in reference to the Sound uh, Soundview School. So right. this includes everything? No, Councilman, this is for the Heights Overlay District and the Jefferson Valley Osceola Overlay District. Those are the ones that are specifically the town, yeah. within the legislation. Nothing else for the rest of the town. No, but the initially the it was discussed, you know, in a triangle and uh, and, and the main street, here. and it came to Osceola, and this was the last one. Now this one has the largest, you know, a comment and, and effect from all the people those who have lived in this town as well as the entire town. So why are we are in a hurry to, you know, expedite this portion only? Most of the people are not ready to, you know, they don't even know what's going on, you know? I don't so, think we're expediting it. I think what we're doing is trying to be more collaborative by referring it out to our other boards and agencies so we can get their feedback. Okay. not setting a public hearing, but it's, uh, we, I think we're at the point now with this legislation that we can refer it out to get constructive feedback from our volunteer boards and other aid, interested agencies. Yeah, we've, we've talked it to so them. We are not saying anything that this is the green light to go. No, oh. that's not how this works. We don't have a law yet. Listen, I, 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 people call me or I hear it 
I have to tell them what I know. And right. if I don't, what do I say, you know? Well, because as a long as tenured it, member it of the board, I think you would, you would explain to them Many, the many different draft. So I want to make sure that I, I read it. And if I don't read it, I, I ask the, whoever can give me the answer. Thanks. This is what I want to find out and learn, you know? I totally understand. No, this is this is a referral process. I'm happy to drop off a hard copy to your house tomorrow to make sure that you have the no, most. No, computer if it's there, I will read it. It's no problem, you know, because I I had a little short of time, you know, between my car and walking right. and all these two things, you know. Right. So, but to your point, to your point, Councilman, this is not a green light for anything. This is the referral. No, no, that's what I'm tell the publicly loud and clear, clear, you know. So I, this way they have we'll information. Say it again. It's not a green light for any project it's not a green light to authorize any legislation we still have a ways to go but it is a a referral process to get collaborative feedback and constructive feedback from all interested agencies vishnu i, I tend to think it's a better way to go vishnu because i think a lot of people have heard a lot of different things and we have had text amended and so now we're be we're able to look at one hard copy right. and and say I'd either like it or you don't like it. Um, so I think that we're there and I don't think we went fast at all. And this is the first public drop then? It's just a referral. It's to other uh, agencies. But the people can read it. It will be on a town board or, or you it's know, posted, town it's it's posted website. On the town's website. website. Diana does that with every, like every other piece of legislation. No, no, no. I'm just saying it because there are so many different different changes all the time. So this is the real, the grand, grande, right. grand, or right. just we, only we, the we, first, we are, final. Right. We're at a point that we can now refer it out. That was the vote that was taken and passed. And so we believe we're at a point where we can refer it out. All the all the amendments and all the up, upgrades updates, excuse me, to the legislation have been continuously posted on the town's website through the town clerk's office. Uh, so it's all been there, it remains there. And so residents are more than able to access it. Um, and so this, at this point, it's just a simple referral so we can get constructive feedback from other, both internal and external agencies. Great. And also, you know, we should be very, very clear that uh, some of the units somewhere are made or being advertised, you know, or, or a rumor or whatever you want to call for it, that the senior uh, for specifically designed for the senior, anybody can go with a checkbook. And most of the building design today are, you know, accessible to handicap anywhere you go, you know, in a good in a store, they have a little, you know, walkway to go or any place else. So I think, you know, we should make it very clear that this is the units are not they are going to give away free to anybody or a low price or something. We should make it very clear publicly. Tell them that this is the whole, you know, the project is just the beginning. Well, no, it's not. We're not even close not to even, a project. That's the no, exact thing. Yeah, that's, no, that's not, not the right not thing at all, the, to be honest, we're not considering I, I think you're saying the right thing because this is truly the first time I've ever seen a project advertise and we're not even we're not even we haven't even created the law right i think you're right there no and i and i agree with that the, i think we've all we've all agreed that the that the cart was put before the horse mm -hmm. uh, but we are not reviewing or or and we are not assessing any project this no project regardless of what happens here has any green light approval nothing they are still they're not even at the starting line right they haven't even begun that process so that's that's a completely separate and distinct conversation and review process that the town board and the other entities are going to take are going to take. But what we are talking about is enabling legislation that establishes the overlay districts in the Heights Hamlet and in Jefferson Valley Osceola. That's what this does. Why not all of them? The entire town. Well, we haven't because right now, John. Well, why not all of them? Because that would be a lot of writing to do. And secondly, they are slightly different from one another, enough so that 
I would think it would become unwieldy you know, to, to look at you know six districts and their particular uh, requirements at, at once. Um, I think it's much easier to take them in smaller bites. And that's why I think it makes sense to do it this way. But it also yeah. allows us to be more focused and, and more methodical and more deliberate in, in giving each hamlet the respect they deserve because we don't want to, to your point, Councilman Patel, the last thing we wanna do is rush anything. But so if you're getting bombarded with all six or seven, whatever, you know, how many we wanna do, it doesn't give, I don't think that you're, you're allowing us the ability or, or, or in our staff and, and the town board to really spend time focus on each section of the town to accomplish what we want. And, and we said that from the outset, if, if my memory serves me correctly, that we weren't gonna do them all together as one uh, because we wanted to take our time and get it right because each part of town is very distinct in their own separate ways. I agree. Okay. So we, the vote. I'm sorry. Did we finish the vote, Vishnu? Did you vote? Okay, so the word is just to refer it out. Just to refer it strictly to refer it out. Okay. So because, I, you know, if anything comes in, any comment, something, we will all discuss and and and, and a, 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 a mandate, ask it, everything I'm else will continue. Go. Okay. Well, we have to get copies. The boards, the board members will have to get every copy of every comment that comes in because you know you have to evaluate the comment as well. A hundred percent. You know, if you really want to make it really formal for the entire board, we should have one copy of what we have it now, and then we will continue to build up the folder. You know, so if need to see, go back to see because the computer is good, but you cannot have a four, five, you know, five pages. You can open at the same time, and when you send it. This optimum airline, uh, or the, the optimum, uh, they have only so many uh, megabytes you can send it and upload it. It's just such a nightmare. You know, these people are T H D. I can tell you that. What they tell you the speed, they, they their speed is to increase the cost, you know, on a big, yeah. big bigger okay. with all this thing. And then, then service what they were providing it, you know, really. Oh. It's a shame that they are ripping us off, you know. Yeah, they are. They are. What, what, I, what I think we should do, and, and I'm happy to work with our town clerk if possible, we'll, we'll take all the comments, we'll create a binder with the legislation and all the memos that we receive and we can hand you the hard copy so this way nothing gets lost uh, in the, on the internet and there's no internet problems and everyone's able to have the same documentation, we all have the same packet because this is that important of a, of a conversation. Is Diana, can if you- If anybody you? public ask us, you know, the more information we, we give them, then you have a better feedback to us. I you agree. know, with what we are doing right, or, you know, this is a, this is like, you know, the, uh, you know, the Python, when they swallow the little, uh, you know, the bear or some porcupine, it's a big trouble, I can tell you. The, the, the python is in a big trouble. I don't know. want to know about no animals swallowing no animals. Well, the porcupine. Well, swallowing a porcupine. Uh, I think that's what I had. It just laid an egg. You gotta have oh, a little cheese. <laughs> I have seen the picture like that, you know, I'm just saying. All right. All right. All right. So we did. So, Councilman Patel, you're supporting the referral. Is that All right. so? We have a unanimous vote to refer out to all agencies. Uh -huh. Uh, and then we'll, we'll collate all the responses. We'll create a binder and a packet that can be hand delivered to all board members to make sure that you have the correct legislation and all memos that the town clerk's office receives. Because you know, every citizen- Just for the, the record, town, you know, all the board should... members get all the comments now, either via yes, by email or hard copy. Yes, they, and, and I, I'm not trying to say that they don't. Uh, I just wanna make sure to accommodate Councilman Patel that we will yeah. make sure he gets a paper copy. Thank you. No, every, no, we will get it in, you know, so this way, if it's not written, you know, if it's written, then you can see and tell the people what it is, you know, and right now, you know, I don't know how many people, they know about all this project and nobody watch all the TV. There are so many problems going on between the COVID and good weather and a job and a school and all that, you know, the people right. are really up to all the way to the Empire State Building on top of it, you know. You know, I think very often people, and, and I'm 
saying this with all due respect, get confused because they listen to people tell us things and that's that's not really true. Mm -hmm. And now they're confused about what, what um, so here is the legislation and everyone can get a copy and comment on it um, because uh, a resident's comment is as good as a board's comment. Right. And this is a, just a proposed uh, legislation, you know, it is not been binder yet and uh, right. final votes and like that. So we are telling the people what we are doing. That's right. Okay. So we've, we've John and Robin, thank you for your, your hard work on this. Yes, I know, thank I know you. it's been a whiff, but you and it's just gotten harder. Yep. <laughs> thank you. It just became yeah. a grandpa. Uh, That's we right. We expected to get harder yet, so. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, Sweet we're going to move on to resolutions. Okay. Let's take them one time. Resolutions to go through here. We're going to again thank you to John and Robin if, uh, for joining us. Uh, resolutions authorize the town board to waive monthly rent fees for Westchester Ballet Center's use of the Albert A. Capellini Community Center. Authorize the town board to waive monthly rent fees for the Yorktown Stages use of the Albert A. Capellini Community and Cultural Center. Authorize the town board to appoint Richard Fawn for a five year term as chair of the planning department or planning board, excuse me, planning board. Uh, from the supervisor's office to authorize the town supervisor to sign an agreement with Municode Corporation. We also have another one here. One second, please. Uh, I'm gonna read this in its entirety. Resolve the supervisors authorized to execute an agreement with the County of Westchester to utilize the Albert A. Capellini Community and Cultural Center for the dispensation of COVID-19 vaccines. From the finance department, authorize the comptroller to pay the cash value of unused time for Robert Ireland at his date of retirement. Authorize the comptroller to pay the cash value of unused time for Joseph Delalio De at his date of separation. And those are all of our agendas, um, excuse me, all of our resolutions on the agenda this evening. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion. <laughs> Motions carry. <laughs> and lastly, a motion to adjourn our meeting. Motion. Second. <laughs> all, Aye. All in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Have a great night, Yorktown. Stay safe. Good night, everyone. And you made my bedtime. Good night. Yeah. <laughs>